Hello, hello, and a very good afternoon slash evening to those of you joining us today for our live stream. Welcome to another live stream with me, 320 Simpilot. And today we're going to take our Manta Air Express CRJ700 for a flight from here. St. Martin, TNCM, very famous. I'm sure you all are familiar or have flown here at some point in Flight Simulator uh, or Flight Simulator X or any of the various flight simulators. And then we're going to head down to Bonaire. We have the new Aerosoft Bonaire Flamingo International Airport scenery. So I thought we'd go and check it out and also uh, get a chance to do a stream from two international destinations, which we haven't done. Well, we have done it once technically with the... Uh, the long haul the last long haul stream but other than that yeah first time we're going to be on bat sim uh we've got uh controllers and we are going to go and try it out so yeah also first flight using our manta Air express livery by ac455 so it should be good fun i think it matches the the location pretty well we are of course in the caribbean here today so uh yeah it's uh it seemed like the appropriate livery this is where i did my little film of the uh of the scene of the uh excuse me livery before we got going Quite impressed to see that the uh, the jet bridge has worked. I did manage to connect to jet bridge. We were talking about this last time, but there it is. Look, you can have the air stairs down, and somehow the jet bridge seems to connect. I mean, perfectly. I, I couldn't believe it when it did it. It it <laughs> it is better than I'm sure it happens in real life. That is perfect alignment. So yeah, you can use the jet bridge to walk onto your CRJ if you really really would like to, as opposed to having to go through the the horror of having to walk outside in 30 degrees and enjoy the uh, the tarmac for a few minutes but yeah in countries where it's pouring with rain this could be a really nice really nice uh, feature to have although you do usually have to pay extra to use jet bridges um even at airports that have many others uh, sorry many stairs right jumping into the chat hello to you all thanks for coming the greatest donut uh, jay i hope you're doing well victor tango thanks for coming and moderating uh, astral core good to see you again aviation forever i hope you are doing well yeah we were getting some uh, thunder and lightning sounds earlier but uh luckily it doesn't seem to materialize into any rain shot in the dark hope you're doing well head of andavine good to see you again and chick point of course salakin i hope you are doing well and ollie nut thanks for coming along buddy too good to see you Mr. Martin Torres, yep, Flamingo International, indeed, that's where we'll be going. Uh, Ronak, Naza, uh, if I get that wrong. Kodeko, good to see you again. Uh, Lita Maggie, Van Raj, good to see you, Van Raj. The Sim Pilot, thanks for coming. Rakon, Ed Haslam, good to see you, Ed, as well. Danjay, Shiresh, Nick T, Tango Delta, if I didn't say already. Uh, Andy H1302, thanks for coming and moderating as well. Fly24, I hope you're doing well. Yep, some more excellent emoji use there from Fly24, very good. Glad you like Livery Kodeko, yeah, I, I'm, I, I, I've really taken to it. The link is in the description. There's two versions. You can have this one or one with a pink sort of wing box underneath here where this area is pink. I've sort of adopted the, the blue one quite a lot. I, I really like the, the blue one. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice. There's a few details we'll look at underway. You can see the specialized uh, CRJ320 SIM pilot logo there. So yeah, he's done a really nice job. Captain Dutchy, hope you're doing well. Thanks for coming along again. Awesome summer. Leopold Schmidt. Brianna, you get to see Brianna. Uh, Brianna actually lived in Bonaire. Excellent. Well, it is the Dutch um, Antilles, isn't it? Uh, sorry, Dutch Caribbean that we're going to. So that's great. Diving is extremely good. I bet it is. Mateo, thanks for coming and moderating. I hope you're doing well. And Giuseppe's Gaming, I hope you're doing well. No, we haven't had enough of the sea. <laughs> Despite our previous overwater flight, this will be a, a pretty much overwater flight. One hour 25. So not a long flight, guys. So we're going to, you know, get lots of uh, set up on the airplane and then head over. It's it's not going to take us too long. I couldn't, I couldn't face anything over two hours for uh, our first return after that long haul <laughs> my last stream was uh was a good 11 i think it was over 11 hours in the end but certainly about 11 hours long as we headed from uh the Maldives down to uh, australia so yeah sim pilot good to, uh, glad you came along uh, johannes b good to see you as well johannes won't fly along today 10 hours on sunday was enough for the week yeah i think that's probably getting up onto the limits of what you're allowed to do <laughs> um so yeah the slight stuttering you're getting will be the stream i'm afraid what's going on is the frame rate i mean microsoft flight simulator's performance has improved and improved for me over the last update I, i'm really amazed by it the result is the frame rate is usually too high for the s streaming software to survive so there you go okay right guys let's jump in so that is us parked up yeah i can see that stuttering going on for you guys i do apologize for that it, it won't be so bad when we're in the flight deck um it's just uh, it's just a sort of, as i'm whizzing around in the drone the v-sync still doesn't work in microsoft flight simulator no idea why not too impressed with that <laughs> but uh yeah robin b thanks for coming tom as well i hope you're doing well <laughs> around the world stream yeah yeah i i uh it took a bit of time to recover from that last one i must say i was pretty tired ryan videos 94 good to see you thanks for coming i hope you're doing very well yeah 
looking forward to this one beautiful scenery beautiful scenery where we're going non-precision approach when we get there and this is the updated aerosoft crj so a few changes for us to enjoy right let's jump in then so we'll do our safety check all those circuit breakers should be in as we would hope nose wheel steering switch is most certainly off hydraulic pumps need to all be off which they are in the middle position landing lever down flight spoiler lever retracted that's just this one here which is all uh, retracted up there Slap slap lever at zero, and they were zero outside. Radar needs to definitely be off. Let's get rid of the armrests. Very useful in real life. Very annoying in simulators. We nearly always, <laughs> I nearly always get rid of them straight away. I'm going to turn up the integral lights, so I want those on when we do power up. Uh, but anyway, I'm supposed to have the radar. There it is. Radar is off. ADG manual release is stowed. The emergency flap switch to normal. Battery master switch. Here we go. Powering up. On. APU on off. Now, uh, we. Do you have a do not have a GPU available at the moment, but I'm going to start up the APU. The reason is uh, I want air conditioning. It's going to be really hot in the cabin. I imagine it's nice and warm here. Although I haven't checked the weather. Let me just bring up the ATIS because we have controllers today, which is always a great fun. Uh, so they have, yeah, strong easterly breeze. Could be quite turbulent getting in the air, especially in Microsoft Flight Simulator. 28 degrees Celsius. So APU master switch gives it power. It comes up here. Uh, and the APU door will open. There it is, open. And they did have a bug with that fixed in the last update. Apparently, it didn't used to open all the way. So you can see it actually opens far more now. I, I didn't know that it was a problem before. This is what I mean <laughs> when you're not you know, flying things. That's how it should look. Before, it used to be a little bit more, um, not quite, quite not quite as open as that anyway. And we're going to press start. Start on, APU powering up. This aeroplane, you know, really simple when you get used to it, but lots of things to get used to, <laughs> as I said before. Ryan Videos94 says, I'm doing great, thanks. Going to try and join for the flight with Air Jamaica, who are sadly no longer going to... Ah, it's a shame. Yeah, lots of lots of airlines have disappeared over the last few years. But uh, yeah, it's um, it's good to revive them in Flight Simulator like we did with the Jersey. The stuttering isn't too bad. Excellent. Good news. It should improve. Thor says, lovely, although windy weather. Nice to get the Easter flying in. Yeah, it is going to be breezy. And Microsoft Flight Simulator should simulate the wind off those hills. I mean, you can see by the water over there, those are some, some proper waves. <laughs> so there's a good clue that it's going to be pretty um, pretty rough. Alex Bitcoin, good to see you. Alex says, your livery is making me crave ice cream truck ice cream. Yeah, I can see why. <laughs> the jetway canopy looks weird. Yeah, the canopy hasn't quite folded over on the jetway, but uh, we'll allow it. We'll allow it. I'm really impressed it connected at all. APU coming online at the back there. I think we can hear it. Right, let's carry on with what we were doing. So AC electrics as required. So these are all in auto. Battery must on. DC services off. APU is now available and that's powering us up. And you can see pretty automatic. All the screens are on. Nice detail here. 320 SIM pilot written up there. I like that. Right, IRS is to nav. These two switches, I think, in a terrible position, but there they are. That's where they put them. Emergency equipment checked. Gear, safety pins we check. So the emergency equipment, um, it's all sorts of things like fire extinguishers and gloves and things like that. Gear and safety pins are the pins to make sure that gear doesn't retract. Not sure where they'd stow it on this airplane, but uh, yeah, there's a hat clip there. If you just want to stow your, your pilot hat. Very good, all modeled. Right, hydraulic 3A pump. We have know this routine by now. So 3A pump can go to... Uh, I think auto is on for the 3A pump, but let's see. That pressurizes the 3 system. You can also put it to the on position, but anyway, there we go. We'll turn it off and it will depressurize. We'll get another caution there as it uh, gives up and FMS initialization. So shall I try and do this the right way around? I think I'll do this the right way around. Let's do everything and then we'll do the uh, the FMS. So uh, all we should do at this point, pause in it. And I've been told, I got told off, so I need to take the FMS position, put that in there. Uh, and that should be good enough to execute it. But I'm also going to put in T N C M, and yeah, very similar. So the FMS position seems to be more accurate. Not to say in the real aircraft it would be like that, but it seems that Flight Simulator loads in and it knows what it's doing. <laughs> Two points says I didn't know you allowed knives in the cockpit. I see 320 simple carved in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, AC four five. I've done done a great job. I hadn't noticed that until today actually. Um, but yeah, yeah, breezy, breezy day. Santiago says, I'm addicted to the CRJ. I only just bought it yesterday. Yeah, you know, I, I, I really like it. I do really like it. And, you know, I wasn't even sure I would um, be that fussed about it. I, I knew it would be a great add-on, but what I mean by that is the actual airplane itself. But it's, I don't know, it's, it's really been good fun. Really enjoying it. Uh, so let us carry on. 3A pump doesn't have auto. If you look closely, it has off on to the Lisa Maggie. There you go. See, you guys are already overtaking me. Um, yeah. Oh, I see. So these ones are in auto. 3A is off on. That would explain why I can't flick it up. Yep. <laughs> there we go. 
always learn something new packs to on passengers are sweating yeah there we go let's do it so the packs are up here packs on i don't know if it does that screaming sound the 320 does it sounds a bit calmer I mean, you can see our cargo door down there open as they load on the last of the bags right so that is all good this is an airplane does the window open i don't think the window opens no it definitely doesn't so uh yeah no luck to be able to put your arm out in the sun like you can on the 320 i do like that you can go to the second page to get the gps positions for it yeah there you go msj and is enjoying it loads yeah good point so if we went to next page you could have stolen one of these gps positions which seems to seems to do the same thing finally the third page fms position all looking good so that is initialized let's go back to um index pausing it good stuff and next we do the flight plan but i'm not going to do that i always end up doing that now and i don't think that's right so cabin inspection and walk around inspection would now be done then we're going to do our oxygen mask check let's get that checked all good audio warning panel checked i think that's up there <laughs> i think that's all about this um electrical power panel checked i should probably go and uh, do a bit more research on that so that is our electrical power up there fire detection fire x monitor test uh, only for the first flight of the day fuel panel um we can check now is that talking about the fuel panel up here i think that's talking about this fuel panel which is where have they hidden the fuel up here yeah so pumps can come on i think i don't see why not i'm not sure whether they'd be on while we refuel but while we're talking about it let's go and refuel now as ever there we go they've sorted that so there's a bit of a, a logic change to this that they've done which makes it a bit easier to power on you'd have seen me struggling in a few previous streams once again our required fuel for today is 4.4 4. um i don't know how i keep ending up with the exact same amounts but i'm actually going to top it up i'm going to go with 5.4 and the first officer has awoken. There we go, 5.4, refueling on. We'll let that do it. And when we have that on board, we deep turn that off and then that should save it in there. Brian Video says, I keep getting a windshield warning at the gate. Is that normal to happen whilst parked? Ooh, good question. So something to remember with these. Andy Bryant, good to see you. Uh, with airplanes like this uh, is that they have a lot of warnings that aren't, aren't phase related. Whereas the Airbus, is, it, it knows what it's trying to do at any one time. My meaning is, look at this list of warnings. Now, perhaps some of these shouldn't be here, but um, we'll just follow the checklist. But my point is, you know, why would it warn us about these things? Well, it's because it doesn't really know. You know, it's warning me that the oil pressure is low. Well, the oil pressure is low because the engines are off. The Airbus would, would silence that warning. It wouldn't even show it to you. The passenger door is open because the engines are off and we're at the gates. But this airplane doesn't know where it is. It's just doing its best. So that's why it gives you this long list all the time. Uh, the warning should go off on the windshield heat when you turn them to low, which I'm going to do shortly. Uh, but yeah. Anthony says, I enjoy this plane more than I should. Yeah, uh, good. Glad to hear it. Audio warning panel is above the FO Skycam. Aha! There you go. You guys know more as ever. Um, so I do have the translate keys finally assigned, so we can go over. There's audio warning. I will not fiddle with it. Uh, and there's the printer. Very Airbus style. Well, very similar style printer. Although it has a paper fill gauge. That's pretty good. Right, have we got our fuel on board? We wanted 5.4. Yes, we do. Over to that panel. So turn that off. Depower. And now just check. Definitely got your 5.4. There we go. So we have that in. We are not on live. We're going to be on Vatsim though, so there will be people around. Great stuff. So fuel panel checked. Bleed air panel. And there is a there is actually a key to look at this there, which actually slides you across. So this is quite a good key and quite representative of what you'd really see. Because, of course, in the real airplane, we don't get that perfect view that some uh, some simulators <laughs> allow us. Uh, so reflect fan on. According to the dude, that is he, he likes having that on. So I'm definitely willing to believe that. It makes sense. We can have nice, cool air for those passengers. Half cargo. I'm going to leave off. Um, but there we go. And that i think is it for the bleed air panel and we will oh no this is the bleed air that's air conditioning bleed air to normal that's what we want bleed valves in auto isolation valve closed bleed source both engines i don't see a problem with that it's not an f14 i don't see why we'd be swapping the bleed source start panel it's all depowered all looking good hydraulic panel checked so now they go checked auto and on so auto on auto auto so just the three a is always on the rest are in auto so the engine pumps will come online when they need to and the other three b pump can come on if it needs to 
great stuff elt switch arm reset that is on elt emergency locator transmitter i think <laughs> goodness me yeah it's used to transmit your signal if there's a problem um and you're you know it it, it activates automatically usually cabin pressurization panel check let's set the uh elevation for landing it is basically at zero so if we go to stats landing elevation zero yeah well i think it might be 10 feet because it can't quite be at zero uh, or it could be but there we go 20 feet elevation that'll be fine Brianni says and like your scuba anyone comment don't expect to go scuba diving when you arrive straight to the pool for you until you finish your paperwork <laughs> yeah yeah you guys can go scuba but i've got i've got lessons to learn Brianni's going to be uh doing a, a, a few days about two weeks worth of uh, theory in the classroom matthew presley says yeah the plane gets hot and cold spots without the reset fan on thanks matthew matthew's our resident crj pilot knows all about it so uh, yeah thanks for coming along and uh Matthew Presley, yeah, do you know, Matthew, is it normal to have the windshield heat warning until we set it to auto? I'm assuming so, but, uh, yeah, we don't, don't know for sure. Fafa, thanks very much. Very kind of you. Um, I'm glad you like the tutorials. Uh, this certainly is not a tutorial. Uh, we are learning as we go, as ever, with this airplane. So air conditioning panel checked, anti-ice panel checked uh, and complete. Let's go back to that. Oh, it's two. There we go. It's two. It's the easiest one. So anti-ice panel not a fan of this panel just because it's a lot of these style of switches all together and they're quite important things but anyway it says checked so i'm going to go with um cowl and wing anti-ice off windshield heat to low uh probes off for now i think um i think matthew will correct us if that is the point uh we shall see right emergency light switch arm there you go. So if we lose power now, the passengers will get that. No smoking can come on and seatbelts on because we have finished fueling. Standby compass checked. It says we're facing north, which is about what uh, we would expect to be. Yeah, good stuff. Nose wheel steering switch. Let's check that once again to off. We're nearly there, guys. So that is definitely off. Let's get these integral lights on. I think for for flight sim streaming, you need all the integral lights on. Otherwise, it's a bit of a nightmare for everyone to see. We'll do the same on the overhead panel. Uh, clock set. Instrument panels checked. Um, we're going to do that when we load up everything. Upper pedestal checked. So down here, got the anti-skid arms, the main landing gear warnings we can do and test the failure of that warning. <laughs> Loads of things. Engines will go with N1 sync. Uh, I'm not sure if Matthew knows why we would do that. Matthew says, yeah, you'll get it when the switches are off should go away when you set low. And Matthew, do we need to put the pitot heats on now or do we do it when we push back? Um, the Airbus will just do that when the engines come on. Uh, but there we go. It's quite rare for us to need to do that for other reasons. Um, Avionics and radio tuning, we're going to do shortly, uh, but the panels are down here, the TCAS and so on. Uh, your damper engaged, or select norm. So I'm going to do MAC trim, your damper, and I'm going to do stab trim because I always forget it later. So there we go. Ed says, what checklist are you using? So I'm using the normal operations, Vol4 normal ops checklist provided with this by Aerosoft. Yep. There we go. MAC trim engaged. Must have done something wrong there. Um, good stuff. And now you see a whole host of those warnings is gone. Um, so that's that's looking a bit better. Forward cargo door, yeah. So let's get that cargo door closed. They're finished with that. Um, and I think we can get rid of that jetway. I'm hoping. There it goes. So this is starting to look like an airplane that's ready to go somewhere. And what I'm going to do is, remember guys, never leave it on that page. I don't know if they fixed that yet. I'm hoping they're trying to. They released the CRJ right as I was finally getting comfortable with the A320. I feel like I'm starting over. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Right, let's go down to the FMS then. So let's load this up now. So airplane's happy. We've got some cool air for the passengers. Let us do the flight plan. So TNCM origin to TNCB. Let me just check that one. Yeah, destination. Uh, alternate is a very good question. I didn't pay too much attention. Uh, TNCC. I do not know where that is. I am way out of my comfort zone here. Um, I've, I've been needing to stream in America, and I'm just trying to decide which airplane I want to use. The magic of the CRJ is, although it's a bit of, a, it's a lot higher workload than the 320, um, but its lateral navigation is, 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 is so far seems pretty good, um, and also it seems quite an American airplane. We don't see too many of them in Europe, but there's lots in America, so it could be quite fun to fly this. Maybe in Canada or something to start off with. Anyway, there we go. Alternate origin runway where we're going to have to depart from a 1-0 at TNCM. No surprise there. We are going to be the Manta. I don't know if I'll get away with this. Uh, 267. I don't know if Tower will let me do that. They have sent me a message already and I haven't answered. So uh, I, I must check in with them soon. 
Uh, right. Don't forget to arm the emergency lights. There's the latest man. Yeah, I think we, did we do it or did I just talk about it? <laughs> I may have just talked about it. Nope, they're arms, they're arms. We're okay. Right, so there we go. Let's execute that. So it has a bit of a route. Let's go to departures, arrival, departure runway one zero. So probably time to talk to Tower and get our clearance, I think. I think that'd be a good next step. Remember, airplanes have flow. So, you know, depending on your airplane, you'll get very used to the exact flow you need to follow to do these things. Um, and what I mean by that is it becomes a bit more natural than the way you see me do it. The sim pilot says they did fix that problem. It's linked to parking brake. When parking brake is off, you can't change aircraft status. Ah, that's good to know. Thanks, the sim pilot. Yeah, that is a really good idea. Um, so, yeah, that, that's good to see the Aerosoft listen to the feedback. Giuseppe says Europe mostly has the CRJ 900 and 1000. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Canada, the European America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all part of America, isn't it? Uh, Matthew Presley says, might have missed the first time I answered that question. Oh, sorry, Matthew. Yeah, the probes are normally an after start flow but they are linked to the weight on wheel switch so they're heated in flight no matter the switch position perfect thank you thank you uh head of end of Eden, you're absolutely right i haven't filed my flight plan that's probably why i'm getting in trouble uh with vatsin now i'm i'm i've not done this for a while those of you who've been with the channel for a long time will remember i used to do this all the time the amount of times i filed a flight plan while talking to you guys so let me see if i can just keep talking whilst in the background you can hear me clickety clacking away <laughs> on the computer uh, but we're gonna we're gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, guys. One hour. Uh, what did I say? One hour twenty-five. Yeah, not bad. Nice flight time today. Uh, for this flight, we're gonna go all the way up to thirty-eight thousand feet. Clackety clack. Please, please, please say I've got that in the clipboard still. No, I do not have it in the clipboard still. That is not a problem. Let me go and grab it. Really short route today. Really short. Uh, actual routing, pretty much direct, which is quite good news. Some interesting departures and arrivals out here as well. Um, so let's see if they accept that. I really don't know. It's this all a learning experience, as I said. Manta 267, please. Okay, I think that is done. Just going to save that one and file. Great stuff. So the ATIS, they are on Information Alpha now. Just to read it out to you guys so you don't have to listen to me getting it. But it's 060 at 16 for the wind. So it is a, uh, a breezy day because it's gusting 27. So that's going to come right off those hills. But it does mean we'll have good good performance, at least potential for wind shear. So we'll go for a lower flap takeoff with a higher second rate performance. That's my plan anyway. I don't know if that's what you would do in the CRJ. Uh, but in the Airbus, yeah, we'd go full thrust. And we're going to go toga thrust anyway, 28 degrees. And of course, very importantly, the Q&H is not written on there. Hmm. I can't see it, so we're going to have to, uh, yeah, get it from Tower. They are on one eight decimal seven. Now, for some reason, very strangely, my little radio panel isn't tuned. So, ah, there we go. I do like it when the, the, I've got a little hardware Logitech radio panel and it does make my life easier. Now we're tuned to tower. Are we listening properly? That's VHF one. I think we are. Oh yeah, and we're on stand. I think this is stand. Uh... Oh, yikes. Let me have a look. I have got the charts. <laughs> look at this. We are on alpha four, it looks like. We stole the last real stand. <laughs> and let me get the name of the airport right because I got in trouble. What do they call themselves? St. Martin, Princess Juliana. So what will they refer to themselves? Juliana Delivery, Juliana Tower. Let's do Juliana Tower. Juliana Tower, good afternoon. Manta 267, stand Alpha 4, CRJ 700. Uh, we have information Alpha request clearance to uh, Bonaire. Good afternoon. IMX 267, St. Martin Tower. Just to confirm, your call sign is not Dimex? Uh, our call sign is uh, Manta 267, please. One out of that. Thank you. Hmm. But for now, IMX 267, you're clear to Bonaire for the motor to departure, done day transition. Initially climb level one five zero and squawk four five one one.
Okay, thank you. Uh, Manta 267 is cleared to Bonaire. Climb flight level 150, squawk 4511. And sorry, can you confirm the departure? Modor 2 RNF departure? That's affirmative. The bow pop departure is only for turbo props. Copy. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll do the Modor 2 departure. Um, Manta 267. Excellent. That's a very nice controller looking after us. So we can't do the bow pat. I have a horrible habit of getting the wrong SIDs. I don't know why uh, Simbrief gave me that. Um, it looked really good fun. Uh, I'll show you guys why I wanted to fly that departure. It was, uh, I was really excited about it actually, but we're not going to be able to do it. Uh, look at that. You take off and you just go, <laughs> just wing it over as soon as you can because of all the hills over here and make your turn right. A big 180 round to bow pat. But obviously it's too, too restrictive for jet aircraft. So we're going to do this um, and our transition is going to B via, oh, let's just make sure we get the right transition. So where does he want us to go? I'm going to have to apologize. <laughs> and uh, for Manta267, really apologize. Uh, what transition would you like us to take after Moda? Dande, Delta, Alpha, November, Delta, Echo. Thank you so much. Dande, uh, transition, Manta267. Okay, right, we'll stop embarrassing ourselves. We'll jump back into the airplane. <laughs> Uh, so that is our departure. We're going to take off, go to Modor, about 4,000 feet, and then go to Dande, which is down there. Doesn't seem to have... Is there any stop altitudes on our departures? Oh, we got told, didn't we? So transition altitude 5,000 feet. We're going up to flight Tower, 150. Um, just going to have to get the Q&H at some point. With information alpha, request clearance, bonus. There we go. We're not the only one. A few got English voices dropping out with us. So let's put in Indiana flight level. One five zero. We'll do this trick. I'm with. I'm a big fan of this. I just look over at the FOS display. Fifteen thousand feet. Let's get the squawk in. Which is going to be four five one one. Ride the Dunde transition. Initially cleared to flight level one five zero. Put the squawk four five seven five. Code time six two nine. Got them six two nine. Feedback is correct. Can we ready for pushback and startup? Four five one one, and okay, my V pilot doesn't do Mo Charlie. I must remember to click Mo Charlie. There we go. Right. Okay. So we must get the Q and H. Um, we are going to cheat. There we go. It must be one zero one nine. Great. So that is our departure. Anyway, after all that, we're doing the Modor via Dande, which is going to do all of that for us, which is just uh, great. Let's zoom in. Um, mm, doesn't seem to have much of a departure from runway one zero. I'll just put execute. Yeah, up, right turn. And let's compare that to our chart. Yeah, right turn. And the text will say climb direct to modal, cross modal at above 4000, which should be fine. If unable, right turn to Dande, that's fine. Um, so as soon as practical, turn right. Tower, that's hello, all the information we get. Elevation of 14 feet, feet which is about what we're reading. So we know that's working. Uh, if we go to legs, we should see the same thing as Modo, Dande, above 4,000, no problem. Excellent stuff. Just going to check the chat. Apologies to that guy. There's uh, lots to do there. Uh, yeah, Gouda. <laughs> Gouda waypoint indeed. Yeah. Uh, right. What have I missed? What have I missed? Andy says, Andy H1302 still wants me to fly the 737-800. There's lots in the USA. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is very true. Giuseppe, yep, yeah, perfect, great. Um, TNCC is Greco. Oh, which is uh, Brianni's place. I can't believe that. Fantastic. No, we will, hopefully won't go there today, but maybe we'll visit uh, Brianni's home now in the next, uh, next, little, uh, next little hop. Bacon Mori, good evening. Thanks for coming. Jacob DHC, good to see you as well. Matthew says, you should see what they do in Mexico. Every clearance is a full route clearance, even if it's exactly what was filed. Never fails to make new hire scrambled as they start ratting off airways. Yeah, my goodness, that that would be... That's always intense when they give you airways in the clearance. Anyway, great stuff. So, uh, let's get our route in. Enough messing around. So that's the flight plan. Modor, next page. So from Dande... I was supposed to go by Bobat and then Bexer, so I'm going to Juliana Tower, you're clear to Bonaire via the boat direction via the motor to departure down the transition. It goes over there because it's a direct. Then we go uh, execute because that's the start of the arrival. <laughs> and then I can go over the arrivals. 
Flight survival index arrivals. Uh, We're coming in the west for the most two, confusing uh, naming I've ever seen. We did the VOR one zero Zulu. I haven't managed to work out how our nav's are flown in the CRJ, and I've barely managed to work out how the VOR should be flown. But we shall figure it out as we go. And there we go. That is the legs page done. Uh, hopefully Matthew sticks around and we'll be able to help us out later. Um, so, oh, what's going on there? Bexa. Yeah. So we got two Bexas in. So if I delete that. Execute. Bexer. It's two Bexers, so I'll delete the second one. No, I'll delete the first one. Execute, and you see it lines up. There we go. Dander, Bexer, uh, and then Noxad in moment. And then we're doing our VOR with a bit of a transition. Anyway, we'll worry about that later. Excellent stuff. Uh, flight plan, so that's all done. Uh, there's our route, perfect. Let's get this done. So, performance. I wanted about 70 passengers today. I don't know if we can fit them all on. Let's load the fuel from the airplane, 5.4. So we're taking off at, uh, where's it gone? There we go, zero fuel at 25.6, maximum fuel at 28. So we're below the maximum zero fuel weight. Um, and it just depends if we're below the maximum landing, 30.4. So we're going to take off at the moment on with a takeoff weight of 31. So we need to burn one ton of fuel. And I think on this flight, we're planning to burn, let me just check that, two tons of fuel. So I think we'll be below max landing weight. It's a very long runway where we're going. Uh, so 30.3, and we're going to be taking off at uh, 31. So that should be absolutely fine. So let's set that payload in the simulator. Let's copy that data over. Great stuff. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Cruise today, we're climbing up nice and high. No, you can't do that, of course. This is a CRJ. Flight level 380. Uh, alternate cruise level is... I did have that written somewhere, but I'm not too worried. Alternate cruise level 180. Might as well fill it in properly. No, F180. Come on. No. <laughs> F380, here we go, F180. There we go, there's our weight, gross weight 32 and a half. So by the time we burnt two times, we'll be 30 and a half. Hmm, that does think we're a bit heavier actually. That is interesting. What's going on there? So if you're at 27.1, yeah. Hmm. Oh, a bit of a frame rate drop. My computer is not happy. Uh, take away 31 tons. Oh, I was so impressed with the performance. Now it suddenly seems to have gotten worse. But anyway, uh, that's got us running quite a bit heavier. So a little bit concerned about that. What I'm going to do is press execute, see if that works. No, okay. What I'm going to do is just drop that weight a bit just to save us any headaches. Let's go for 60 passengers. Set. Copy. Frame rate's back at least. There we go, 31.7. Okay, let's run with that. Then we go next page. We've got the winds. I'm going to put in the average wind for the cruise, which is going to be um, 253 at 50. Quite breezy. Nice and simple, though. I like that. Don't seem to need to press execute for that one. And finally, then, there's our estimated time on route. Uh, 1 hour 19. That's about what we said. 1 hour 25, remember. 4.1 fuel. That seems high. I'm imagining there's a, some sort of altitude restraint it has in there that is not, not required, or unless that's a fuel on the arrival, I'm not sure actually. Because um, we should burn only about two tons. So, not sure, not sure. VNAV setup, fine. Transition altitude five. So, this actually works from the database, which is great to see. I've, I don't know if that works even in X-Plane, this database of uh, uh, transition altitudes, but that, that's automatic, which is really nice. Cruising at 380.74 which is quite nice. Transition level four zero in the descent. Very low. Not much terrain around, as you can imagine. 250 at 10,000. Right, I'm running out of things to do there. So I think uh, we shall leave that alone. If we look on the nav display, there's Modor above 4,000. Nothing exciting there. Stopping at 15,000. Finally, then let's set those speeds. So we'll go for a flap eight takeoff, set all. The reason we're going to do that is I want to have um, the, a good second gradient climb performance what i mean by that is 
we have terrain at the other end of the runway now i'm not sure what they're doing st martin it is really close so i'd almost be tempted to actually use more flap but i think if we go flap eight we'll get airborne and then make our right turn at sort of straight away uh, and that should be a good idea if we had an engine failure we're making a right turn straight away i can't can't really stress that any more than that <laughs> giuseppe says the crj goes up an easy forty-one thousand feet yeah it's got an amazing performance matthew says with an rnav we fly them all uh cdfa in vs mode with the vs from the chart for our glide slope starting the final descent 0 0.3 uh, before five, five. Nine, one, perfect Midward five, nine, or one. thank you matthew Six, perfect four, four, five, zero, four. I'm imagining then it's very similar for the VOR, except I can use uh, nav mode or um, four, yeah, five, nav mode four, should one, follow one. that localizer. I did practice that Midland earlier. I'll follow a radio. Um, um, Fusion said I've just learned to do an RS in the three twenty. Quite hard to get my head around it, but I have learned it. Well done. Just what M says. I'm pretty sure Bonaire will be filled because there is no place for this amount of planes. No, that is a good point. Um, yeah, the transition altitude very good, isn't it? I didn't realize that would be loaded in. Juliana Tower, when we're six four two. Don't pronounce Krakow wrong and get the controller. It's uh Karasau. Karasau, thank you very much, <laughs> Brianny. Just what him says after departure, turn right heading one eight zero. Perfect, that's what we'll do. Right. I think I think we're pretty much there. So let's go for the before start checklist. Passenger signs are on. Landing elevation is set. Altimeter is one zero one nine, showing about twenty feet. FMS is checked and set. Uh, what we will do is we'll go to MFD menu and we'll have on. Let's see a bit more information there. IRSs are both aligned and in nav. Radios and nav aids are set. There's not much in terms of nav aids that we need to worry about for this departure. Um, it's just a right turn to go head down to that remote point. They've updated to Bravo. Uh, radios nav aids take off briefing complete. So next is to get cleared to start. I'm going to go to aircraft. Uh, let's, in fact, let's get the tug. So I'm calling a tug. Let's remove the chocks. Close the cargo door, close the passenger door. Then, there we go, it is all happening. Let's get push and start. We were on stand. Already forgotten, four alpha, alpha four. <laughs> Makes more sense. Manta 267, alpha four, request push and start. Manta 267, push back and start, QNH 1018, push back and start approved, nose facing west. Pushback start up approved, nose facing west. Manta 267, QNH 1018, thank you. Right, QNH 1018, that's what we have uh, gone for. Uh, well, I'll just go with the simulator one. Um, but yeah, we would set that now if we hadn't. Um, Roslyn Music says, do you know if they fix the glide step issues on the RS approaches? Yeah, to be seen, to be seen. But we aren't doing an RS today, sadly. They, they've made some adjustments to the RS, though. Let's finish the checklist then. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that. I think we're good to start. So, uh, personal electronic uh, devices come uh, off. APU is most certainly on. Electrics are checked. Takeoff data is all set start down here. Approved. Doors come are closed. Electric. Beacon to come on. Uh, so, the NAD lights on as well. And oh, no, that's the logo lights. Uh, fuel pumps and quantity on. So, fuel pumps are both on. We've got our 5.4 tons of fuel. Hydraulic pumps are auto and on. Parking brake on off. Right. So, the tug is in. We need to go nose facing west. And that is going to be really tricky. We are quite cramped here. Um, did you say west? Nose facing west. Does that mean he needs us to go around into the Charlie apron? Let me see. Because I suppose. Yeah, okay. For Manta 267, uh, would you like us to push, do we need to push round into the Charlie apron to get our uh, nose facing west, or can we do that here? Push back into the Charlie apron, that should be uh, fine. Okay, thank you, uh, Manta 267. All right, good luck, wish us luck, guys. Uh, so, um, I'm going to release the parking brake. We're going to go to options. There we go, yeah, very good. So, you can see that those states now cleared out. Um, that's, so I won't turn off the EFB this time, but I will try and not leave it on that page. So the brake is released. Windward Let's five, go. Nine or one. Are you ready for the push? Yes. Windward 591, Roger, we're ready for push and Right, this is going to take full capacity from me Roger, to work Roger, this one out. In about, uh, one to two minutes. So I'm going to go nose okay. and then then to here to face west. <laughs> that I don't know if we'll manage. We'll do our best.
Seth says it's nice to see someone streaming. I do streaming myself. Excellent. Santiago says I did have problems yesterday with the glide slope. Okay. And had you updated Santiago? I assume you had. Um, yeah. They've changed some of the logic between the way it does that. Now I'm desperately trying to reverse at the same time. After. Have we not done the after? <laughs> and there's the water. Ah. Aft cargo door is an amber warning. It's obviously not as important, I suppose. Maybe it's not pressurized. Anyway, aircraft. Very good spot. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Don't leave it on that tab. Come on. We know this by now. That door's closing up. Dougal, good to see you. I hope you're doing very well. Thanks for coming along. Only one leg today, Brandon M. Yeah, we're taking it easy after the long haul. We didn't want to uh, push it too far. Let's try and get that nose all the way around now. Then we'll start up engines when we're in the Charlie apron. Which is this little apron here. Looks like we've got some other traffic flying along with us. Or flying around, anyway. Frank says... I did an ILS 30 minutes ago. Went to way too low. Speeds were good. Ah, okay. Can't you leave the after open? It is already getting pretty warm in here. No checkpoint, sorry. Sorry, you can't have that luxury. You have to pay for some ice water. I'm sure we can sell that to you on board. Oh, we won't do too badly here. <laughs> Sometimes that's what happens if you get an unlucky stand like that. Because there's no other way really to do it. I can't see. Not bad though. I'm pretty happy with that for once. See if we can finish it off though without a mess. <laughs> that this tab is not much better. Do you want to play the rats? Good point. <laughs> okay, we'll change that tab again. Okay, reverse and stop there. Okay. Lovely. Let's set the parking brake. Tug can leave us alone. Here we go. Let's start up so yeah let's not accidentally deploy the rat let's go for that tab okay so favorite favorite starting sequence uh, i think it's brilliant we're going to go start we get a start light goodbye tug just waiting for 20 percent and two so easy absolutely brilliant six two and nine takes one point alpha then we have one zero a fire charlie Alpha four one zero via Charlie. Yeah, 19, 20. Red lever up, forward. Says idle. Engine starts. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So we've got fuel flow already. I would like to see some ITT very soon. We're still getting some acceleration. There's the ITT. Let me just check how the audio is. Let me know if you guys can't hear the airplane at all. Turn at 8.75 after departure at right turn heading 180, wind 070 at 160. <laughs> we would like to be moved up to premium class. Sorry, there's 300 of you almost. So thank you all for watching. Uh, do like the video if you're enjoying it. But yeah, um, if... Uh, <laughs> there's, there's definitely not enough room for you uh, all in the cabin on this one. Oh, the first officer's joined us just in time for takeoff. Hello. After departure, right turn heading 180. Making enough noise? Or are you doing alright today? She's quite happy now. Made the point. Right. We've got that PA running. Let's start engine number one. Start. Same again. Whilst that's spooling up, let's set up our wing view. Got on 6 to 9 Do you have the windward CRG 7 inside? Right in front of you. There it is. Um, Sounds like we have a few CRJs uh, flying with us. Him. Yeah, checkpoint. The, uh, <laughs> the FO did arrive. Oh, this is great fun. So we've got a lot more traffic here than I'd expected, which is good. Jared's uh, still in first class. Excellent. Okay. Juliana Tower, windward 6-4. And there we go. Ready for it's all picture. happening. Windward 642, stand by for the push. Traffic behind. So we've got a bit of a plan here for takeoff. A flat 8 takeoff. Uh, on takeoff, we're going to press the toga a little button by pressing this to cheat. Then we're going to accelerate at VR. We'll rotate 133. Then it's going to be really 
quick, but we're going to get the gear up and I'm going to make a right turn as soon as I'm comfortable. I'm not even going to wait for 500 feet because I don't see the safety aspects of flying towards those mountains, but some airlines will have different procedures. I'm sure you'd have very specific local procedures. That's a good engine start. I love that there's a speedboat out there. That's great. <laughs> After start check then, generators go to auto. Electrics are checked. Bleed valves auto. Packs on. They are indeed on. APU uh, can come off. Anti-ice on off nose or steering arm um, so apu we don't need so i think that's all we need to do let it shut down uh, i'm going to put on the pito heats because we forgot those last time and as matthew says they're done by weight on wheels anyway and uh what else was i going to do i had one other thing i wanted to do nose or steering it's not what i want to do it's that i need to do we need that to be turned on okay so We'll check that our ground crew has indeed left us, which they have, which is great news. That's right, guys. Right. So, uh, yeah, we are pretty much ready to go now. The sim pilot says, take care. I'll catch you up later. Have a great stream. Thanks, sim pilot. Uh, see you next time. This says, I deployed the CRJ uh, back last push. night. Had to mute sim. Yeah, it is pretty noisy. Ready for the push. Windward 642. Windward 642. Teenage 1018. Push back and set up a proof. Let's no get spacing our west. taxi clearance. Teenage 1018. Uh, push back approved. No spacing west for Windward 642. Thank you. Manta 267 requests uh, taxi. Antra 267, taxi holding point Alpha, runway 105 Charlie. Taxi by Charlie, holding point Alpha, runway 10, Manta 267. Right, guys. Let's... Antra 267, from that position, do you have the windward CRG 7 in sight? Uh, uh, is that on our uh, left? No, and you're right at, uh, at the gates. Uh, I think so, yeah, if it's over at Alpha 1. He's on Bravo 1, so uh, he's going to be pushing, so I just don't hit him. Okay, yep, I do see him now. Yeah, okay, great. We'll, uh, we'll stay out of the way. Thank you, Manta267. Okay, that's good. Wait, I think five, nine, oh, it's that traffic over there. The um, but we, because he's over Please. here, so we're on Charlie. We're going to take Charlie and then Alpha. So, let's see how we're going to do that. That means pretty much. It's not very clear, is it? But I think we're going to go Charlie. And then this must be Alpha to take us out there. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Just sorting a few things out here. Let me get rid of the pushback tug. Let me get rid of the charts for you. We're ready to go. So back in the flight deck where we should be. Let's get the... Uh, where's the taxi light gone? Taxi lights. There we go. And we'll go. We're clear of the taxi. Brakes released. So we're going to go right, left. Just got to push, be careful of that aircraft over there. If we go left, we'll accidentally end up on the runway, which we do not want to do. Ah, uh, yes, Ninja says, in the long-haul live stream, you said Swiss Air, but actually Swiss Air went bankrupt. You probably mean Swiss International. Yeah, that's true. I do struggle with the Swiss Air and getting confused. Uh, that's, that's my fault. <laughs> Whereas Reislevin says, left the after open to boot off the uh, the passengers from there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is a bit of a confusing map, I agree. And this is just default scenery. Oh, no, that was them over there. Okay, so we just have to, what, give way to them, I suppose? I don't mind either way. We've got plenty of extra fuel. We're going to be last in the queue of traffic for this one. Got them 6 to 9 er runway 10, land for weight. Runway 10, land for weight, got them 6-2-9. Yeah. Uh, why did I end up at this colour scheme for the livery, asks... Who asked? I'm so sorry, I've lost who asked. But, uh, yeah. This... Oh, my FO is in the way of my... Uh, <laughs> ability to get to the pedals, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, why do we... Uh, 
have these color schemes this color scheme is it's simply just what I, I came up with the logo for the channel um back a year ago almost pretty much a year ago no a bit later than a year ago because we didn't start with this these color scheme on the channel we actually had um we had uh, we were use, using the default Airbus livery, um, but we went with this one. Uh, I came up with the logo, and I liked the colours. I've always liked the colours. I've used it in lots of different things before, um, but they just—I think—they complement each other quite nicely. And I wanted to um, have them in the logo, so we made the logo, and then went through a bit of a rebranding early on in the channel, and that's how we ended up with it. Yeah, it's quite simple, really. Let's do some flight controls. I think we have to display them ourselves. Yeah, so. Let me go to flight control. It's got more ecam pages than the Airbus. Uh, fall Custom left, six, two, fall nine right, hour. neutral, fall down, Off departure, fall uh, up, right turn heading neutral. One eight zero. See, if I look at that, I seem to reach maximum deflection quite early on in the, the travel of my joystick. So I think I need to, Off I think I can right reduce the pitch sensitivity uh, by reducing the sensitivity curves because I don't think I'm having much effect for the last part of the travel on my joystick so that could make it a bit easier to control that is something I will need to test uh, so what we can do is we can swap over to this checklist anyway so now we'll go to taxi checklist that's flaps yeah it still amazes me that we don't set those earlier <laughs> there they go they are at eight flight controls are checked trims we should have 7.8 i did do a practice takeoff and i found the trimmer worked a lot better than i expected it and what i mean by that is it didn't uh take off early for me we shall see today because i i did basically take to making up the trimmer just to make sure that didn't happen uh, anyway trims are set thrust traversers armed armed flight insurance checked brake temp check brake temps are hopefully nice and cold at zero we'll go to stats so APU SOV open. So that is because it's still got power. So let's turn off the power to the APU. It's going to close. There we go. Seatbelts no smoking we want. So I'm going to press it again. And it boxes those messages. So it just says message. Brakes release. Let's get going again. Cool routine today. Looking forward to seeing Bonaire, says Bobby Fuzzy. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's fun to, to go and fly somewhere different. And this livery just fits in here. Now, AC455 made this livery and very kindly did a little history. It's supposed to be based out of London Heathrow. So we're on a bit of a, a, a summer charter, shall we say, to go and, uh, or winter charter. Fantastic. Bye bye. Seppi says, with how twitchy it is, I found best result at minus 40. Yeah, I can I can believe that. And what I want to do is create a dead zone, so or, or make it so that it reaches maximum pitch. Hard to explain, but there's there's a lot of there's unused travel on my joystick, so I think if I can get rid of the unused travel and spread it out over the whole curve, that would be better. Piano says, did I hear you correctly on the last Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 stream? That after the last update, you know how everything set to Ultra. If so, what frame rate are you getting? It depends on the airplane a lot. But yeah, I run everything Ultra now. This is 1080p. I do my videos at 1440p. I can get 60 frames a second, but it just depends where I am. But it, it, the last update seems to have really improved it again. So I'm quite impressed with the performance at the moment. We are using VATSIM Gasserize, yep. Kadeko says, did you make the logo? This logo you're seeing here is by um, AC455, who, who customized the logo for this livery. Um, the logo you see on the channel, uh, I made, yes, with the help of my graphic designer. All right, we're going to go and hold down here. Oh, it's nice to go. Good to see you. AC455, thank you AC455. So AC455 made this delivery. They said, uh, I don't know enough about the UK, so I just afforded to Heathrow. No, that's great. <laughs> it's uh, the FO has left. That's bad timing. She obviously didn't want to do the takeoff. Um, no, no, the, uh, the Heathrow made a lot of sense. It was, uh, I'm just, uh, it's just the first time on this channel that we've really taken it um, or taken a, a stream somewhere different. But there's too much good stuff in Flight Simulator to ignore. Speedbird five two four. Speedbird departing. If I look at that map, I might be able to see some of this. Line up and wait. Runway one zero. Mantra two six seven. 
Okay. We've done all that before takeoff. Obvious things though before we line up. Lights, lights, lights. Please have everything. Oh, actually, wing inspection rare. I don't think we need those on. So lights are all on. Fuel flow needs to go to manual. That's to stop it spilling or something like that. Uh, flight attendant advised. Transponder C cast is on. Radar terrain display set. Cast checked. So cast is checked. Still no messages. Uh, radar terrain display doesn't work at the moment. Um, probably a weather sort of day actually. So I am going to put the weather on because we did see some thunderstorms. So let's go weather. Leave it in tilt of auto, which is quite a clever system. Right before we enter the runway, looking out. No traffic out there. Fantastic. Once we swing round, I'm going to engage the heading. Yep, yeah, we are indeed using that sim. This is the very famous airport, so I don't actually have the scenery. There is some freeware scenery. I didn't download it in time, but I I think it includes the fence. There should be a fence here. And yeah, everyone stands on this beach and the airplanes land right overhead. So I'm either going to get the freeware scenery or maybe the payware scenery. I'm not sure. It depends if we plan on coming here again. The Logitech radio panel does work with the Flyby Wire 320. Indeed, I've used it. You have to assign a key to avionics master switch on shot in the dark if you do that then press that key from a cold and dark and you can use the radio panel a great view for those people at the beach for of this uh yeah very tropical looking livery some really nice details on it i love the the little pointy arrow at the front and it does say 320 sim pilot next to the pilots. Clear for takeoff runway 10, Manta 267. Thank you. And uh, I should read back. Uh, we'll take a right turn heading 180 after takeoff. Right. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> really nice controller today looking after us. Let's give it a go then. So we set the trim and we're all ready to go. So. That checklist is done. Next is a climb checklist. So let me just think through it. We're going to go. There we go. Heading. That's what I need to align the heading bug. So that's in front of us. So we're going to take off. We just turn right south once we're in the air. The wind is going to push us away from the yeah, island. Um, and we're going to rotate at 133. We can retract the flaps at V2 plus 12. And then again at VT minus 15. Which will probably bust straight through really, really quickly. Um, this plane is, is very fast. So important things is. Hill in front of us. Don't go into the hill. Take off. 200 feet if that as soon as i think it's sensible we'll make that right turn in modern airlines it's usually 500 feet but they, I, I said earlier they almost certainly have special rules for departing here that they'll do like a safety risk analysis to see if it's safe to do this right let's go then guys so spooling up the engines there they go pressing the toga button we get toga or take off take off on the flight directors releasing the brakes two clicks forward toga thrust and we are underway. Bit of forward pressure. Okay, there's 80 knots. I think they'll put the stick to neutral at 80 knots, but I can't remember. Let's see if it rotates early. I hope it doesn't. No, it doesn't. There's we want to rotate. See, they, they've absolutely sorted that, which is really great. Into the air. Keep rotating. Positive climb. Gear up. Okay, let's get something sensible. There's 200 feet there. Let's make a right turn 180. I don't know if it's like the CRJ, uh, sorry, like the Airbus where we wouldn't do that uh, too early or we wouldn't follow the flight directors either. But there we go. Uh, I'm going to do a right turn. What I'm going to do is get the other pilot to press that in a second. So let's engage speed mode just to help with that pitch bar. This is where two pilots would be so useful. You can see that speed absolutely running away. There's 180. Then I can go to heading, autopilots. Oh, and I should have selected the heading bug. There we go, Mantra my mistake. Contact Juliana, approach 128 Manta 267. Thank you, thanks for your help, bye bye. Right, let's focus on the next stage. So, thrust back to climb thrust. Let's accelerate the speed to 250. We're above VT plus 12, so flaps to 1. And we're above VT minus 15, so flaps to 0. Important though, it's easy to miss that, I found. See, it's done it there, it's stayed at 1. Now it's gone to 0, perfect, right. And we're going to set standards by clicking on the barrow. 
Right, let's get on to five, two, four. I one, guess two, you eight. Are clear. Nine, five. After departure, heading one, eight, zero. Departure Manta 267, climbing flight level 150, heading south. I should have said passing as well, but there we go. 267, hello, Juliet, approach, identified, climb flight level 150, and fly direct to Bexar. Climb flight 150, direct to Bexar, Manta 267. Okay, 150, we are doing. There it is. Direct to Bexar, which is the start of the arrival. Execute. Two things to do, though. I now need to also go to nav mode. There we go. FMS 1. It's a nav source, it's making its right turn. Climbing at 250 knots, let me just do the big check. Gear is up, flaps are up, okay. So, check this, check this, check this. Climb, check this. Fuel cross flow to auto. That can go to auto. Please and APU set. Thrust reversers can come off, cast check. So, thrust reversers off, cast. There's no messages, I don't think. Do we have to press it again to check? Let's press it again. Smoking your seatbelts. Fantastic, and away we go. It is like a little fighter jet, isn't it? That was really fun. I really like that takeoff with that immediate right turn. Yeah, that's that's really good. So that's uh, that's where we just left, I believe. Yeah, there's the runway. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I did. So that was great fun. Good approach. Good evening. Don't go into the hill. Absolutely inspirational. It was this Kodeko. Yeah, there you go. That's the sort of uh, tips that you guys come from here, <laughs> come for on this channel. <laughs> Lauren V says pressing the toga button is the most foreign thing for me in the CIJ. Really I'm used to just going full throttle if I want toga. Yeah, the toga button. It doesn't actually. Oh, I don't know what it does, but it, it just gives you the takeoff. It doesn't seem to have, well, it doesn't command Toga. Yeah, Adam says it's like a fighter jet. Absolutely, yeah. It, it has, uh, it's, it's a really nice airplane. It, it does fly really nicely by hand, from what I've seen anyway. Manta 268, contact Sun, one center, one one eight, one five zero, bye. One one eight, one five zero, Manta 267, goodbye. We've got loads of controllers on there. It is, uh, of course, daytime. <laughs> For once, it's level quite good for us to fly zero. west. And, uh, oh. and just check we haven't leveled off. Oh, we are almost leveling off already. A radar Manta 267, the climbing flight of a 150 to uh, Bexar. What did you say, call sign? Manta 267. Manta 267, someone center, good day, so welcome aboard. Continue to climb and maintain flight level 380. Climb maintain, flight level 380, Manta 267, thank you. Perfect. And uh, Windward uh, 642, climb maintain, flight level 360. 380, there it is. Climb maintain, flight level 360. Let's update the heading bug. Let's zoom out the range. Giant uh, 1165, uh, cinema chain. Uh, and that's it, that's what we're doing. Delta Just going to regain that course for us in a second. Uh, three, zero, zero, five. They're serving sandwiches in the cabin. Lucky passengers having a sandwich as well on a flight over to a paradise like this. Fantastic. All going well, Velvet Blue. James says, is changing your bank angle that quickly realistic? Um, well, that's probably a bit much. It's um, it's quite it is quite responsive on roll. <laughs> so that looked like a fighter jet approach to you guys, or a fighter jet turn to you guys. That's probably too much. It's a little bit easier to sense in a in a full motion simulator with a real airplane. Um, you don't want to wing it over too much. I mean, there's, I didn't use full controls or anything silly like that, but um, yeah. I don't know. I'll have to look at the replay to see what I think. If you did enjoy the takeoff, guys, please do hit the like button on your way out, and we'll see you again for the approach. Just M says, thanks for flying to TNCM. You're very welcome, Just M. Thank you to TNCM for looking after us. They, they did a great job, considering we're, we're way out of our comfort zone. Or oh, I certainly was. Fathers, uh, 230 says, how come some regional airlines use jets and some use turboprops? What's the advantage? Well, the jets, um, they're faster and could be considered more reliable depending on which turboprop you go for. They tend to hold more passengers. They can go higher, um, would be the classic. But this CRJ is very similar to the Dash 8 in terms of uh, size, passenger numbers and so on. Um, so why you'd have this instead, I, don't, I really don't know. It could be convenience. Uh, I... I don't know. We can accelerate that climb. Because turboprops tend to burn less fuel, but they fly a little bit slower and a little bit lower. 
I think uh, 200 knots climb should be good for us today. Giant, uh, 50, 51. Roger. Uh, Lauren Vies, is there some fun controllers in the Caribbean? Hope we get some. Yeah, uh, yeah. Juliet, cross runway 10, Hotel Alpha. Tony says, do you base runway. cruise settings on N1 or fuel flow? Mm, Matthew Presley will answer that one. Um, is it based on fuel flow or N1? It probably, well, it's whatever N1 you need for the speed. It's based off the speed, really. The fuel flow and the N1 are sort of most pilots will use M1 as a judge of how much thrust they need, typically. Thor says, I think you're logged in as a CJ4. Am I really, Thor? I'm so sorry. I, I, I can't believe I've done that again. I was, I, because, no, I thought I, I thought I did it right, but maybe I've messed it up again. Maybe I've messed it up again. <laughs> just when I'm, was just when I'm controlling, were you controlling for us then in uh, St. Martin? Thank you if you were. I was bored and this gave me something to do at least. Just please don't hit the plane in front. Yeah, we do our best here. Nearly did. <laughs> Togo, good to see you. Thanks for coming along. Matthew Presley says, Speed, there's nothing regional about regional airlines in the States. Yeah, that's. A, I suppose that's a good point. And that's maybe why we see them a little more rarely in Europe. Um, you know, you're flying serious distances in uh, in America. To, and these, these are regional sort of commuting jets that take people to the hubs and so on. They'll be, they'll be covering far more ground than we would in the UK the Dash 8 is fine because the UK doesn't need a CRJ to fly from Scotland to London <laughs> but uh, so the Dash 8 works much better yeah Lauren V on sectors under an hour the Dash 8 will be as fast uh, and much more fuel efficient than any regional jet but any longer than that and it's slightly slower speed gives it poor uh, returns and that's the thing isn't it we talked about this last time if we keep lowering the cost index negative, uh, or if you keep lowering your speed sorry it may burn uh, less fuel for what you're zero. doing so the actual fuel flow will go down but if you're in the air for an extra 20 minutes maybe it's not worth it Steffi says was looking at Oxford charts and noticed the ILS is not to be used for auto coupled approaches does that mean it has to be flown always manually? Is VS and heading autopilot mode acceptable? Well, you can fly an ILS completely manually or you can fly an ILS using vertical speed and heading. Uh, yeah, if it, if it says not for coupled approaches, that means it's not up to the standard where they would think you can use your autopilot to do it. Um, so that's interesting. It, I've seen that once before. Um, yeah, very interesting, very interesting. I didn't spot that in the charts. I was just doing VFR stuff in my recent Oxford video. For those of you interested in VFR flying, or even if you're not interested, hopefully you might be if you watch uh, my latest video where we take uh, the Just Flight Piper Arrow, recently updated, over to the new Pilot Plus Oxford uh, scenery, um, which is really quite special, really nice. Matthew says, our average sector length is a little over 700 nautical miles. Yeah, that's serious. That That is, yeah, there you go. That's much longer than I was predicting. So that would explain it. You can't, no good having a Dash 8 for um, that sort of flight. That's a long way to be going in a Dash 8. And these are a bit quieter and so on for passengers as well. But it, the main, <laughs> I, I doubt the airlines care. <laughs> Their main concern will be time. So if these sectors are taking too long, they're burning fuel because the airplane's in the air too long. Um, and they can't make their schedule work with the connections to other flights, then that's where you, a jet will be more useful for you. Seppi says, landing at Oxford with the CRJ is lots of fun. Very good. Toga says, the turboprop engine was really designed for mid-altitude, around 20,000 feet flying. This makes them very suitable for short hops where you won't climb to higher. Yeah, absolutely. And they are incredibly efficient turboprops at those levels. I did watch the F1, Adam. Yes, it was good. I hope everyone's seen it by now. Spoilers, at, uh, spoilers six, for seven, Sunday's race are now allowed on the channel. <laughs> um, but yeah, it uh, it was it was good. Yeah, I thought it was good. I quite liked the battle at the end, and I liked the uh, the excitement. I was pretty pleased with Alfa, Alfa Romeo's result, as you guys know. That's my team. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Lewis did well, of course. Let's go to update the heading. Change the max speed now, says Johan. Yeah, it doesn't seem to do it automatically, so click. Good point. God, climbing at its decimal 79, that is sporty. I like it. AC455 says, I'll always love the Dash. I had plenty of flights on them with multiple airlines in Canada. Dash is, uh, yeah, it's a really, 11, uh, really fun thing. It's, I saw there's a Dash on flightsim.to, but I don't know what you guys think about it. And it's, uh, yeah. Please repeat. Oh, no. Menu. Please Let's go. Your descent. You're a little high. 
for right, ETA. And it's got all the airports. You can see we've managed to pick a route. There's the, there's the Antilles and so on, and we're going to head straight over. So we aren't very scenery orientated until we get there. FFS says so many super chats. He now owns an F1 team. That's it. Yeah, you see. <laughs> see you guys as all shareholders in uh <laughs> in my team looking forward to the fly jason dash there's bacon Murray. yeah that should be excellent looking forward to that too and one center speedbird five two four uh right yeah, flight level one five zero Matt, Matt, let's see what sort of in chaos are we causing super five two four someone standing back on my board climb it's aim flight p eight zero Climb maintain flight level 380, speedbird 524. It's hard to even find where we are on the map. I have to scroll all the way over there. Usually there's a line of us. There we are. Yeah, I'm at the back. There's a couple of uh, WIA. So some people are doing it properly. There's a Thompson. There's a speedbird and another Thompson behind us. <laughs> and then the WIA? Where's the, what's WIA? See, we're going to be lost every time I fly anywhere else in the world. Tom Jeff, the photo Zulu, someone send a hello, so welcome aboard. Climb and maintain for the whole 300. Climb and maintain for the 300, Tom Jeff, photo Zulu. Matthew says. That's how the plane actually works. The release version was wrong. It will only auto cross over from IS to Mac and vice versa at 31,600. Oh, very good. So it's a half bank. It does that automatically when we get up to these levels. We're into our last thousand feet. I'm a little curious. It's in climb decimal 78, but it's not really targeting at 78. It seems to have given up on that. Any reason why that's happening? Dash head on the website uses the CJ4 cockpit, so not really dash head. Ah, yeah, no, that's not good. Tristan says, evening. Uh, evening to you, Tristan. Uh, Tristan says, yeah, I like the dash too. I also remember taking the dash 7 with Bryman. Need Paddy to make that livery. Yeah, Paddy, Paddy needs to be on it with the uh, the Bryman dash 8. That's a... Um, the dash 7 had four engines. Pretty cool. Four total engines. Now, we were supposed to cruise pretty slow, actually, today. I'll be honest, I tend to cruise at whatever my thrust set levers allow me to, just because otherwise they snap into the detent and try and accelerate to climb cruise size. We should do decimal 7, 8. So there's our capture. It's not going to take us long to start our descent, to be honest with you. So I'm going to start getting the charts ready over here. It does do a very slow capture, doesn't it, this aeroplane? Very slow. There's out. So... Come on, thrust levers, you can do it. Nah, no, see, if I leave them any further, it just sticks at climb, and then I can't um, can't guarantee what the speed will do. So let's see where it settles there. Might be a bit slower. 2042, we've got to the cockpit for two minutes. Hopefully that's going to work out. back. I think that's going to be fine. Excellent. These contrails, are they in line yet? No, they haven't managed to fix that one yet. <laughs> Excellent, up in the cruise. CRJ doing a fantastic job. A lot of water around. See, it's, still see the breeze in the right here. Right here. So, let me just set up the stars. We're going to do a west arrival. Now, either the VOR or the RNAV. Does TNCP have any controllers? No, they don't. That's good news for us because we can do what I want to do. Transport for zero contact, Juliana approach. One to eight, decimal nine five zero. One to eight, decimal nine five. Uh, goodbye. Lufthansa four four zero.
sorry about that guys just sorting something out right <laughs> sorry a bit of uh, a bit of admin to do there with uh, with that sim so oh sorry hello van der Veen. yeah the, i know what's going on there hold on stand by stand by stand by that is my cloud bot from last time um Oh, I'm not sure I'm going to get around to that. Let's see, word protection. Okay. Stand by. You'll be able to talk freely about Formula 1 in just a moment. <laughs> That's my fault. I forgot about that. We introduced a few moderation tools for the, <laughs> for the last one. Okay. Okay. Or should we go back to normal? What's this again? We banned a few words just to make sure no one tried to get the uh, <laughs> the result through. Although I think it happened anyway. <laughs> we tried our best. Let's just say we want to do this more seven five. That seems to work for us. SB, good to see you. Thanks for coming along. Checkpoint says uh, WIA winner, government owned airline. They're based in St Martin. Uh, fantastic. There you go. Makes far more sense. Uh, he says, uh, love, having the Dash 7 would be so good, especially since Aerosoft just announced the Rothra Air facility. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, the Dash 7 was used for short runways. Yeah, London City used to use it as well. But four propellers, you've got a lot of options with those. Peter Tango says, you're a proper petrol head if you support Alfa Romeo. Yeah. yeah. I just, I hope they can do a bit better this year. I hope so. Yep, F1 words are unbanned. Santiago says, I'm down for an F1 channel. Are you guys after an F1 and channel on Discord? Uh, right. right. Anyway, we are almost there, guys. So it's time to chat about uh, the descent. Let me get the charts up for you. Right turn, 160 versus the final. Here's the plan. Uh, one of the most confusing pieces of terminology I've ever seen. But there we go. Bexa, above flight level 3-0. Above flight level 3-0. <laughs> Uh, and then we're going to cover 100 miles. So this, I'm wondering if this is why the fuel is calculated so overestimated anyway so much. Uh, we're not going to do that flight level 30. But then we'll go to Noxad. Uh, and finally, Imoma, which is the initial approach yeah, fix. Then we've got two options. I'm going to do the VOR. Unless air traffic gives us the RNAV. Either way, the... Um, Moma, I believe, is 11.1 .1 miles out. Oh, so actually, we're not even going to use a Moma. Uh, but we will. Let me just check. I haven't missed it. It's not there. It's not there. No, a Moma must be an RNF point. Um, yeah, I tried to use the RNF earlier, and I couldn't quite convince it to work. I'm not sure. I must be doing something very wrong. Um, so uh, I'm going to set up for the VOR. Which basically takes us to this 16 mile point. Um, oh, actually, well, let's let's find out. Let me find out. Let's see what we can actually tune in here. So, what have we got for now? If I go to, I think there's a way to set this to plan. I think that's it. Uh, Zoom in. Seems to work there. Does seem to work. And this is using oh, the VOR for one runway one zero Zulu West four goes to Imoma, which is basically coincides, and then I'm just going to intercept the VOR myself, establish inbound. Imoma is a little bit tight in, so I might widen that out with radar vectors. We're going to be so visual it's going to hurt anyway the whole time, so we don't need to uh, be too concerned. Um, we could alternatively just um, fly visually, but anyway, we'll try the VOR out. Uh, we're going to have to use vertical speed. And we're going to use nav mode up here um, to engage it with the correct course. And we'll change the source to VOR, not FMS. And it should, therefore, intercept the localizer and fly that. Sorry, not the localizer, a VOR radio. Radio on radio tracking on my channel if you would like it. Uh, so that is all good. And there was a reason we this didn't work last time. Uh, what is it I need to do? Arrival data. Here we go. Uh, it seems to be one zoo. Glide slope angle. What happens here? I haven't seen this before. Mm, not sure that's working. Not sure that's working, but there we go. Um, how do we get the top of the scent? Oh, I always forget this. Usually when I don't have an arrival, it does have the discontinuity. You can see it goes Imoma and then uh, to 13. 
So let's try deleting the discontinuity. Executes, previous page. Let's delete the vectors. Executes. Does that work? So if we scroll through, mm, it's not really working, is it? I could delete the Amoma points. I think I'm going to do that. Executes. That's looking a bit more healthy. And now we should start to get a top of the scent uh, and everything working out. Let's change the format. The range. Oh, don't know what I did there. That did not go so well. What have I done there? That's odd. Oh, it's got two Bexes in it. I think. That's very odd. Very odd. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Seems to become a set of this waypoint over here. Very strange. Legs. No. Flight plan. Next page. Bexa, West Ford, right? Knox ads. Mm, strange. Very strange. Legs all seem fine to me. I don't know why it's got these double Bexa points. Come on, do that. Why is it trying to go back there? There we go. Solved it. It must have drawn out the arrival again because I've been fiddling with it. Something like that, I think. Anyway, we solved it. We're going to Bexa. It's going to do this wobble. So he thinks it's off to the left. And it's going to Noxad. Hmm, so maybe it is supposed to say it twice. Maybe that's not the problem. Maybe there's another problem there. That's probably me fiddling too much and making a mess of it. Right. We're at 38,000 feet. Good. So how do we get our top of the descent to display? I, I've managed to get this to work previously. It doesn't seem to want to work now. Matthew Presley says it's that waypoint zero. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so that was that was the waypoint that was a problem, not the double vexer. So that's no issue then. We won't worry about that. Yes says, hey, uh, how about flying into TNTM in an Orbit Airlines livery and recreating the FSX Caribbean landing mission? Yeah, that could be good fun for a future one. Yeah, I think that was in the CRJ as well, wasn't it? Funnily enough. Yeah, Glysope has been fitted with, but uh, Glysope worked for me in the old, original launch version. As long as I change the nav source to the um, radio source instead of uh, the... Um, FMS. It was a problem to do with the FMS switching, I believe, but anyway... They can indeed land via ILS, but they can't also land via stuff, I do not believe. Fun fact says AC-455, the tail registration stands for Air Express Sim Pilot Aircraft A. Fantastic. There we go. I wanted to find that one out, and I was trying to look it up on the, uh, <laughs> the download file for it. Download is in the description if you guys would like it. Yanis said, hi from SDU Center, by the way. I was going to ask why you make such interesting turns. Yeah, sorry about that, Yanis. <laughs> I thought I could get in trouble for a second there. Um, it's... It was just causing us issues there, and I was close to having to go into heading. Seems to have got away with it, though it has slowed us down just a little bit. Ah. The ETA clock is in Zulu time. 1847 Zulu. Uh, Harry. Uh, sorry, Mickey. No, I don't know why that one would be. Right, guys. So, anyway. Why can't I see top of descent marker? Oh, there it is. No, I can. Top of descent. Okay, okay. And if we go to direct, we can see the vertical speed required. And I'm going to go to MFD menu, and I'm going to put VNAV window up. And then it should come up up here as well uh, as we get a bit closer. We're still a bit far away. That is quite a long range, actually. It's, uh, you know, what's that? That's, that's, that's a long way. That's a long way. We go to legs, does it show up in there? No, it doesn't bother. Uh, okay, good. I think we're getting there with that. So let's finish the setup then. Um, so that's our routing and 
we are let me just check they haven't come online no they haven't good so we can continue to do what we want so we're going to do the west arrival which is really confusing because it's for the easterly runway but you're coming onto the west side of the airport something really funny about this or not funny but just interesting to me is that the east arrival i would expect to have been approaches from over this side over on the east of the airport um but for this one no it just means a, an approach that ends up at the east side ready for an approach onto the westly facing runway uh, so that's the plan we're going to go to bexa noxad we're skipping the amoma which is the initial approach fix um this is pretty much for the rnav it says rnav arrival uh, we're going to skip that and i'm planning to just turn in and intercept this approach 2000 feet at 13 miles out there's no terrain around to worry about the msa is 1800 feet the whole way probably for something on the island uh, yeah in fact there you go there's an 800 foot obstacle so that's what it's for so we'll go down to 2000 feet nice and early turn final uh, and then start our descent from 7.8 so matthew said to do it 0.3 before so we'll do it at 8.1 ish miles good luck if i manage that at which point we'll go vertical speed and start down i did find i needed to change the altitude above me before i could do that to make it really work so I'll wind the altitude up out of the way, press vertical speed and start down. Um, and I'll need to make sure both sides are set to VOR source because I tried it earlier. And what happened was I had this side, I changed this one from FMS to the VOR like that. But when I tried to, I didn't bother changing this side. And when I tried to go vertical speed, it wouldn't let me. I don't know if Matthew can confirm if that's normal. Matthew shudders at the mention of the VNAV window. Oh dear, I'm just following the dude's instructions. <laughs> well, are you not a fan of it, Matthew? What, what do you prefer? Does it not serve much purpose? Is there a better window? Uh, 11, what would you recommend? Uh, 65, um, oh, hold on. I'm not even showing you the chart. That's my fault. I've been talking away about it. There you go, guys. So sorry. So, so sorry. Right. Uh, so when I <laughs> right. So this is the westly arrival. Uh, this ends at the west side of the airport to land on the eastly facing runway. The easterly arrival is exactly the same. Uh, but it ends at the east side of the airport to land on the westly. Now that makes sense when you think about it, but normally a oh, east arrival would be for approaches starting over here. The west chart would be for approaches over here. Um, but these are sort of, yeah, the, the reverse of what I expected. But there we go. So we'll follow down. Vexa, Noxad, skipping a moment. Approach chart, VOR. Intercept this VOR inbound 102, the one at 10.5, one is VOR. Start down at 8.1 nautical miles, 3 degree descent, so vertical speed will be somewhere in the region of 800, maybe 700 feet per minute. Uh, we've got going to have, that's based on ground speed, remember, strong headwind, so probably 700 to be honest with you, but we shall see. Down we come, got the altitude readouts to follow as we come down, so I'll have this up on my left. Um, and then we'll hopefully go visual and land. We do have pappies on this runway, minima 340 feet, so I'm going to set that up uh, in a second actually, because I also want to show you the after landing massive great runway 3000 meters but we seem to always land flat 45 i think that's the only way got a little turning point but i reckon uh, we can turn on the runway it, it's pretty wide we should try that out uh, and then come back park up we'll squeeze into one two three four five or six uh, and i've got the scenery so a few of these have airplanes on them already so good luck to us hopefully not everyone stays online after they've arrived <laughs> i doubt we're going to overtake anyone at our current speed one two seven decimal one have to boost it up a little bit one, two, seven, decimal one, uh, uh, okay, uh, so that is the... No, one, don't go to climb thrust. This is a problem with the detents. They're ever so slightly too sensitive. Oh, we've got less thrust now. Okay, it seems to be waking up. So that is the plan. Matthew Presley says, It works for the sim, but that VNAV window can get you violated in the real plane. It only shows you the next fixed required vertical speed, so that there is a more restrictive... Uh, window further down the line you can wind up way higher for it yeah okay good point it reminds me very much of the dash 8 so the dash 8 this is the page i've been referring to it just gives you each waypoint the angle you need to fly so to be at bexa uh, it's telling us it's going to be at bexa at 380 i think then it's going to be a knock set at 126 and then it's going to be at the 30 mile point at 3600 feet and finally the 7.8 point which is our final approach fix is where we're going to start our descent at 2000 feet so if I wanted to be there at 2,000 feet, I need to go down at 1.2 degrees right now, which is 700 feet per minute from now. But we shall see what happens as we get closer. 21, center, windward 642, request flight plan amendment via text. I think. Center, that roll mode. Got away with that for a while, didn't we? Let's go back to nav. FMS 1 out S. <laughs> FMA awareness, the most important thing in modern airliner aviation. It's, it's so crucial. 
There we go. Um, so, I think that's that done. Next page, next page. That's just our legs. We've done our VNF setup. Um, minima. So the minima for that VOR is, I think it's the same for both, 340. I do remember this one. I swap it to MDA. I'm going to click it in. Scroll, 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 scroll. 340. There we go. Good news. Um, don't know if there's much else to talk about. I'm sure there's loads. So to fly that VOR, I'm going to make sure that what we do is slow down early. So I'm going to get down to 3,000 feet. Uh, and then actually I'll get down to 2,000 feet. So we have a nice view of the ocean out the window. I love flying low over the water. It's really nice. Um, it gives passengers a great view. Got, um, six nine, and what we can do is on slow down. And then one. we need to yeah. descend at 8.3 nautical miles. Uh, Sorry, 8.1 nautical miles. Away. So I'm going to make sure we are gear down and at least flap 30 by that point and pretty close to our V approach, maybe just sort of a couple of knots fast, then start down. Maybe even I'll go flat full and then start down. That's what we do in the Airbus. It's, it's just hard to configure down the slope when you're trying to do it with vertical speed because you will just get high because the airplane won't keep the vertical speed. Plus, if you're changing airspeed, then the required vertical speed changes and you make a mess of things. But interestingly, I think this direct button will help us because after the 7.8 um, there is a four mile point but it does show you the uh, uh, and then the six foot two. The, you have a you going to send? it wants to be runway ones are uh, at zero feet so it should show us the required angle uh, the required vertical so speed the whole time to, <laughs> which would be pretty good then on one, two, seven point so we shall one. see what happens with that going over to one, Rianney says there is approach over Carasso though four, there very two, good seven. can't believe you're going to yeah. live out there fantastic fantastic Speaking of trivia, says which is Tango, do you know what Alpha stands for in Alpha Romeo? Oh, go on then. What am I? Uh, you have to tell me. <laughs> Lauren B says the east-west arrival terminology is pretty common in the Caribbean. Stars will usually be pretty much the same, but for the other ends, the VOR approach looks like a common one for the region too. Yeah, there you go. So it's just it's one of those things, you know. You just get so used to this stuff when I see it the same over and over. But that just shows you, you're just sort of scraping the surface. Just trying to sort out my thrust levers. They're desperate to try and sit at the climb thrust, which is going to overspeed us eventually, I think. Someone's saying, what's going on? Is there a green accent on the rear? I haven't noticed if there is. This is my uh, stream settings. So there should be some traffic out there. I can't see anyone though. We still don't have contrails on the AI planes around us. Oh, there you go. Exit is a TNCC and TNCB arrival point. Adam says, fancy going for the new M110? Ooh, M110. Is that for X Plane 11? What's the M110? I haven't seen that. Yeah, so the reason we're flying a bit slower is simply because my thrust levers, I've got the. Um, Thrustmaster TCA and it has detents. Now the detents are really useful, especially for takeoff. The downside is the detents mean that um, my throttles, they, they, they sort of try to sit into the detent. They, they, if I get too close to the detent, the throttles sort of get magnetized into them. I know it's not a magnet, but it gets sucked in. The problem is this is the, all the range I've got. You can see there that they're, they're so close to it. Um, and if I go any further forward than this, what happens is I just end up at climb thrust and the airplane will accelerate. Um, so it's easier for me to cruise slightly slower 
um, than it is to, um, to try and go a bit faster, put it that way. So yeah, as Dana J says, you can disable the detents by unscrewing them. I do often disable the detents. I think they're quite good for the CRJ. I just, I just may need to sort of remove one of the detents for the CRJ to make it easier. Matthew Presti says, best example of how the VNAV window can catch you out is the Hydra in KPHX when, is that Phoenix? I've been impressed if I've got one of them right. Landing east, that will give you guidance to the top of altitude windows. And if you cross Gila at 17,000, you'll only have seven miles to lose 5,000 feet. Yeah, it doesn't sound very good. <laughs> Jeffy says, the Embraer 110 is for Microsoft Flight Simulator, but it isn't all that good. Not terrible, but needs time in the oven. Okay, I'll have to look it up. I hadn't heard about it, I must admit. I hadn't heard about it. Looking forward to the Twin Otter though. Bye-bye. Yeah, so I, I often disable the detents in the TCA um, for the GA and other flying, but um, Tom, eight, seven, I didn't want to give them up for the CRJ. There is a detent dead zone. The, the, the main reason that doesn't work for me is that the, thro so the throttles will sit in the detent. So you can go to options. Next page, calibrate throttle, and you could adjust it all in here. Um, and that was blocked by the other plane. Could you say again, plane in the air? I could cheat. I could cheat. I haven't. I have to decide how to do it. It's not too much of a problem because if I leave it here, we cruise at seven five. It's just a little bit slower than the CRJ needs to be. Such a short flight. It's, it's not an issue, and it hasn't been an issue so far for us, luckily. Swappy says, "I was just looking at the Airbus Phantom three hundred. Yeah, that does." Did uh, did look good. I, I've seen a lot of rave reviews about it as well, um, but I haven't. I've got no experience of business jets at all. They seem very well equipped, far more equipped than uh, anything I'm used to. Put it that way. No good. Uh, we're currently. It looks like a left that one uh, extended uh, almost over the numbers of field for uh, St. Thomas. We'd like to uh, defer it up there if possible. Uh, Moose says, what do you like more, the 328s or the Airs or CIJ? I can't choose. I definitely can't choose between them. 328s is just fantastic, isn't it? Full of so many, so many great features and improving so much. So if you want an Airbus, that's the only way forward in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's not even, well, there's, nothing, there's no competition. That is the, the product, and it is so, so good. And this is a great, great, great CIJ. I've got, I've got just, I, I can't really think of any complaints with it. Ah, very good, Rich Tango. There you go. So much I don't know about Alfa Romeo. <laughs> my my uh, fandom of them mainly comes from the colour scheme. Menta 268, it's your turn to go to Curacao 127.1, see ya. 127.1, Menta 267, thanks, mate. Bye. Very nice controller as well. Oh, see the frame, it's silky smooth on my end. I know you guys might be getting a bit of stutter, but uh, yeah, I'm really, really quite amazed. 3802 Bexa. Control Manta 267, flight level 380 to Bexer. Manta 267, hello, Curacao Control, radar contact. Expect the west for arrival, Bexer transition. For the arm of approach, runway 10, record ready for descent. West for arrival, Bexer transition for the arm of uh, 10. Can we request the VOR, please, runway 10, uh, Manta 267? Radar, no problem, stand by. Simon Wood says, Sim freeze, oh dear. Now, uh, this, is the CRG worth it? I think it is. I, 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 I think it's it's a good, really good, uh, challenging aeroplane to fly. It is challenging. It, you're not going to be able to, to leave this one alone. You can see even the speed keeping here is uh, 
causing no problem. considerable the to the south, uh, for, uh, considerable back. intervention required. Roger to the south and we'll report we stand back to number eight by one ten crowd. And he said stand by, but anyway, they asked us to report our descent. We'll do that a bit closer. Thirty-eight thousand feet. Six seven, that's no problem. You can expect the uh, DOR. Would you like the VOR yank or Zulu approach? Oh, that is a good question. Uh, we can take. Um, uh, we can take either. Uh, the Zulu works for us. Uh, Manta two six seven. No problem, expect the VR Zulu uh, approach for runway 10, report right before descent. Okay, Manta 267, and expecting VR Zulu 10. Great. Thanks. We'll stick to the Zulu. Control. They can just radar vector us to it, <laughs> uh, but we have a bit of a cheat in mind. I don't really want to fly the DME Arc. DME Arc starts from Noxad, so. I'm just sort of hoping they don't try and make us fly a DMA out from Noxad. We could do it. We could do it if we needed to. We go from Noxad 152. I can just show you guys what that would be. Just I'm just going to prepare it in case they throw it at us at the last second. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. But it's going to be incredibly high workload for one pilot on their own. Um, anyway, Noxad 152 inbound to the VOR, the Papa Juliet Bravo. Uh, as we get closer, so I'm going to have to be really slow to do this. We can descend to 3,000 feet, then 2,000 feet. So inbound 152, keep my course bar on 152. And then we need to fly a 16 mile arc. So I would need to turn right to what's that? That's going to be what? Uh, 240, something like that initially. And then just adjust around. Um, I can cheat though. Let's give ourselves a bit of a helper i can draw that arc on uh, so it's a 16 mile arc so if i put in it's based on the uh papa Juliet bravo you guys are just watching me muddle my way through here why not hey thank goodness uh, and then we can do distance 16 and now I'm hoping and I can also put that radio actually let's do that because the inbound part will be there uh, so the inbound the 332 uh, expect the west 4 uh, star uh, the Arnold approach will one no zero, intersection and the vector transition and we'll oh, no, we lost the distance no what's it doing now Oh, and I'll keep the distance. Oh, I see, because that would be a specific point. I'm hoping that's going to draw a ring for us. Um, Matthew will know better. Um, right, here's the plan then. Let's see. Let's see if if we uh, zoom right in, we go to the plan view, and I go to legs. Oh, zoomed in too much. No, it's not showing up. Ah, uh, will this show up if I zoom out? But not, I'm not in plan view because it looks like it's there. Number eight five one ten to Bravo. The south of the airport to. That um, ring there, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Number eight five one ten to Bravo. Join the right down when runway one one. I'm hoping to draw a ring anyway. Let's see if that's worked. Hold is pretty simple. You go hold, you choose your waypoint, and then you can type it in. Yeah. So we can put it in at Bexter. Like that. So you select it, then put it down, and then you can do all of the information you want on it um, and execute it. But I'm going to cancel that. Matthew Bristley says, just make two PJB fixes. So that should work for the distance. Okay. So we go to the next page. Papa Juliet Bravo. And then we'll put in that radial, the 332. Because we've done this before and it did work. Why did it? I don't need an intersection. Don't know what it's talking about. Not sure. 
anyway, we'll keep our fingers crossed that we've got a 60 mile ring. Otherwise, we're going to fly it on the DME. So, crucially, I'm going to set my course. Thank you very much for your subscription. Uh, the uh, Streamlabs bot's coming live. Thank you, Adam, Timothy, Dave, uh, Akish, Ege, if I got that right. No, Patrick, thank you all for subscribing. I'm just going to turn off the alert box for a second. Uh, thank you, Sergio. I hope you're all doing very well. I hope you're enjoying the video or the stream if you are watching. Do please hit the like button if you're watching and enjoying it, please. Thank you. It makes a big difference for the channel. <laughs> Pretty stoked to see the VOR DME 10 says Thor. Yeah, we'll stick with the, uh, the VOR Zulu. Anyway, 11 minutes to our top of the cents coming up. Um, but yeah, I think that little green ring there, I think that's a 16. So I think what we'll do is we'll fly around that ring. Should work, says Matthew. Oh, well. Oh, there we go. Um, so we will fly around the ring and... What I could do is in the background, see if this works. Let's go heading. Nav source. Is there any way to see the course otherwise? Um, if I go to the radio page, it's all auto tuned. Uh, so I, I'm not too worried about that. So let's set up the course bar already. So if I like inbound on 152. So I'm just going to set 152 on here. November 851, Tango Bravo, wind 100.4 knots, runway 11, clear 10. So if I inbound at 152, let me write this out big. 16 DME arc, and then we'll intercept the final track of 102. Descent at 8.1. If everything's going haywire, if, if, if we find ourselves just staring inside absolutely sort of obsessed with all the numbers and the green lines and everything let's put that back to fms1 uh, then all we have to do is take up the autopilot level at 2000 feet descend at six miles from the airport um, so that is uh, something else that i think i'll do because 2000 feet six miles is about three degrees so let's do that let's put in a six mile distance there we go there's the two rings yeah i think that's going to work so if we're totally lost uh, we'll just do six miles and descend in from there. We'll be visual, fully configured by that point, and then we go. Right, let's enjoy the view for a little bit. Back to the checklists. Anything else to do for the descent? Landing elevation's done. Fuel is checked. Yeah, how are we doing on fuel? 3.7. That's definitely a bit thirstier than it said. We've burnt two tons already. Descending fairly soon, though, in nine minutes. Um, so that's not too bad. Let's so go to our fuel... ECS page. Let me bring that uh, stream labs alert box back online. Check nav. Great point. Thanks, guys. Nav. <laughs> there you go. MS1 out there. Um, okay. So fuel. There it is. Wow. That is a confusing looking fuel page. That's quite impressive. If you used 1,800 kilograms, so 3, 6 plus 18 would be 5, 6, 5, 4, wouldn't it? So that's what we started with. So that's great. Oh, God, temperatures and everything. These are some fancy, fancy pages. That's cool. Yeah, pretty straightforward. So we go back to stat. Seems to be the standard page. Ah, oh, seatbelts. Goodness me, that's no good, is it? Poor passengers. There we go. Up and about in the cabin. Mustn't forget them. Thanks, Matthew. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. It's good to have you guys as the uh, monitoring this. Riceland says, This is why I mostly just fly the ILS or visual approaches. Yeah. Tango Bravo. Uh, continue to the internal aviation. It's, it's very easy, you know, when an ILS is offline to spend ages briefing this. I wouldn't be surprised if, if I was flying this route in real life. Would I have even briefed the VOR with the weather as it is? Probably not. They've got an ATIS now at TNCB. Code 629, request to set. Code 629, descent flight level 70. So they've got information, bravo. Zero, code uh, just to read out to you guys, they're departing runway 10, as you would expect. Strong easterly wind today. Transition level is 40, which is what we have set in our box. The wind is 09019. Um, and it's even gusting. Gusting 2.9. Oh dear, that is breezy. Plus a hot runway, you know, with the sun beating down on it, but it'd be very easy to float here. But it's a nice long runway. Uh, and it's varying 06 to 13. So it's a very good headwind, very strong headwind. That's good. 
and uh, one zero kilometers or more. So great visibility. Scattered one thousand nine hundred feet. Actually, so scattered at nineteen hundred feet. You know that could make it difficult to do a visual if you were stuck in that. So I would probably actually yeah, if that's the weather, then I would brief brief a VOR as a backup. Broken two three. It's much cloudier than I'm expecting. Temperature plus two nine. Lovely. And, uh, that's correct. Expect the and here's the QNH. For one. Back zero. Zero transition. One. Two. QNH approach, one zero one two. One zero. Information. Bravo. Cool. Pretty straightforward then. No great QNH and concerns. Five, Even if we forget, we'll be very close. Cruising at seven nine now. See, I'm not really sure. I've I've got the thrust levers further back than I did earlier. <laughs> Thor says, this flight is so much slower than the other way around. Those headwinds are kicking up a fuss. Yeah. Checkpoint says, I love the wings. Yeah, AC455 did a great job on them. Yeah, I really like it. 320simpilot.com is a real website. You can go to it. Got the guides on there. So, something to remember then. Landing this airplane... So we'll make sure we're on the VOR. So we need to change the FMS source to the VOR source. And we need to uh, arm the reverses on final. We're going to be manual brakes, but I'm just going to use reverse. And a little bit of braking. And then uh, we're going to start down at 8.1. Try not to flare early. Very easy to do for me. I'm just not used to the visual picture on this airplane. So for me, flare a little bit later. It's just hard to, to do that because you <laughs> just convinced you're going to get a hard landing if you do. Oscar, good to see you, Oscar Lamprecht. Oscar says, hello everyone, a bit late, but the weather here was just gorgeous with 26 degrees. Fantastic, Oscar, yeah, enjoy it. It was uh, it was 20 plus degrees in the UK today, but it was a bit cloudy. I didn't see much sun today. The weather yesterday was perfect, though. Lauren V says, it's called the trade wind the other way for a reason. There you go. <laughs> Sleepy Drone says, is normal or working in fly-by-wire A32 and X because I was able to stall? Yeah, so, you know, the A32 and X actually, it even produces a stall, stall warning, which is something you can only get in alternate law. So it's not quite perfect. They know the low speed uh, protections aren't quite right at the moment. I'm not sure. I haven't heard Thompson down there, uh, down at 10,000 feet yet. No, I'm not sure. CRJ have full cabin uh, made with chairs. Yes, it does. Oh, oh, I can't get to it like this now. But it does. How am I supposed to do that? We definitely had this open before. <laughs> oh, well, it does. It's got a full cabin. I don't tend to use it though. What else have we got down here? Here's all the switching panel it looks like. Cargo fire X. While I just hear something click. Oh, that's interesting. Another weather radar. Are there two radars on this airplane? That would be very fancy. The Airbus only has one, although it does have an option for two. I don't know. I've never seen one with two fitted. Very fancy. Like they do. Let's try that. No, it's not having it. Oh well, that's probably a good thing. Let's put it back to where it should be, <laughs> and we jump back in our seat. But the, uh, yes, the answer to the question: it does have a cabin. You can't see it from the drone view. Yeah, you can see the cabin from exterior view. That may be what you need to do. Yeah. There you go. AC445 says, The winglets are inspired from my favourite Canadian airline, WestJet. Funny enough, there will be a WestJet parked on the ground. So we're going to Bonaire. Bonaire, otherwise known as Flamingo International. So it's obviously on the island of Bonaire, which is in the Caribbean Netherlands. Um, a lot of holiday flights go there, obviously KLM and so on. Um, it's had its runway repeatedly extended. It's a really long runway. It's quite quite impressive, uh, as we saw on those charts. Uh, it, it was at one point it was, a, it was a very short runway, and then in 1935 uh, it, it was a 
the first airport sort of was constructed in 1943 the military were using it and they wanted it expanded the americans wanted it expanded so the new terminal was built and that became flamingo international um, so this scenery is by aerosoft and uh, i've only done a little bit of experimenting with it but it's got some interesting features uh so it's got passengers that actually walk on and off the WestJet airplane that's parked up there which is quite amazing so you'll be sat there and now the passengers will stroll on and off the airplane now I don't, the plane doesn't go anywhere but it does give a bit of dynamic sort of uh, detail to the to the scenery which I haven't seen before something else that's quite good which I took from uh, Giuseppe's great review Giuseppe's done a review of this uh, on Twinfinite Gaming um, but yeah what, what's really good is that uh, if you change the date and time it, the tower actually changes to the old tower which is really quite impressive. I've never seen that done before. Uh, so yeah, very clever. It's got some flags which are animated, which I really like. So yeah, very good. How do you move the camera like that? Says Minister. You have to assign the translate view keys. So I've just got them added to my arrows and I can just zoom about, which is actually proven to be very handy. Why is my transponder in standby? Let's have a look. That's not good, is it? So. It's obviously our vaccine one's working. So here's the question then. Matthew, what should we do with this? What do we need to do here? Don't want to change that. It's got altitude reporting on. It's got the right ID. Can we just do it in here? Danny Mobile, thank you very much. Very kind of you, Danny, for your uh, $3.52 donation. Good to see you again, Danny. Danny says, uh, good evening, Captain. Looking forward to the approach into Bonaire. It looks really nice. And by the way, you forgot to add a Streamlabs link in the description to donate. Oh, did I? <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much for coming along. Um, uh, Danny, thank you very much for the donation. Thanks for supporting the channel. Really appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, that's that's bad. Turn the eight up to one. You'd think that would be obvious. I don't know how I've got this far with this airplane without knowing this. Am I looking in completely the wrong place? But yeah, thank you, Danny, for your donation. Really kind. And Danny, also, I need to thank you for your last donation. On I think I don't think I got a chance to thank you on the long haul stream. The the thank came in. Uh, the the little tip came in right at the end. So thank you for your donation at the end of the long haul as well, Danny. <laughs> Very kind of you. There's a knob below that that you have to turn to set the transponder on. A grey three position knob that says ATC. Under the weather radar. Oh, ATC selector, I see. Ah, oh, there we go. Wow. Well, that shows it doesn't really talk to bats in that match. There we go. Out on. Oh, okay, perfect. So, because I was looking for a TAR race sort of switch, but that seems to work. All right, we'll leave that as it is then. Excellent. Thank you very much, guys. Learn something new every day. <laughs> okay, we're going to want to start our descent in just a minute. Thanks, Giuseppe, as well. Uh, Matthew says, lower pedestal, left side, number three positions. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you've all got it now. <laughs> Thank you, above stab trim. <laughs> that must have been so painful, you guys, to watch. I was staring right at it. Just wasn't what I was expecting to see. Anyway, there it is for anyone else who is as daft as me and hasn't managed to find it yet. Excellent, excellent. Right. Very intuitive, yeah. <laughs> I can blame... Oh, yeah, exactly. I'll just blame something else. Okay, we're coming up to our top of descent. If I go to flight plan, no, legs, no. Um, is there a page that shows us... Progress page, I think this is the one. Right, so destination is 132 miles away. 
131 miles away. Is this track miles or direct miles out of interest? Um, can I see it up there? 130 miles. That's the same page as up there. Anyway, top of descent is now 23 miles. I'm not sure why it's saying 23 miles, actually. I'm not going to be at 23 miles in 000. zero, zero. Quickly, yeah, we will go about descent shortly. Left 190. Matthew Presley says, here's a fun question for you guys. Why is the fuel temp taken out of the right wing? The ECAS synoptic page will give you the answer. Hmm. I wish I knew what the ECAS synoptic page was. Uh, I've tried. I have read the panel, I promise. Is it talking about the fuel page? Taking that the right side. The APU comes from the left side. Uh, 58, 58. Why would the left side... Sorry, the right side be the one. I remember, I think the Dash 8 only used to give us one fuel temperature as well. I only bothered with one. My assumption is... I have no idea why I think this. Well, I do have an idea why I think this. My guess would be that the right side is colder um, for some reason. But uh, whether that's true or not, I don't know. So it's giving us the lowest temperature by default. It's heading. Right, time to descend, most certainly. Manta 267, request descent. Flight level 070. Flight level 070, Manta 267. Oh, this is nice flying. I could get used to flying out here. That's just fantastic. Makes me wonder why we spend so much time in some of the busiest airspace in the world on the channel. <laughs> We're always flying over Maastricht and places which are heaving. 70. So we know we should use vertical speed. And. If I go to direct, wants us to do three and a half thousand feet per minute. Oh, we're not doing that. Problem tearing descent two thousand five hundred feet. Own air QNH one zero one. Out of the thrust. We get back to the stat page. What's up, uh, Coton six two nine? Seven six two nine. Seven 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 two we're not, we're not checking dinner. So why, if the APU is full from the left, why does that affect the fuel temperature in the right-hand tank? Why would it not be shown there, out of interest? Matthew Presley's got all the technologies on the CIJ, it's great. <laughs> so does it show a vertical speed required up here? It doesn't seem to. No, but we do have it shown on here. There you go, so it says it's about 2,300 feet per minute. If I go to direct page, it says to be 126 at Noxad, I need to do 24. I think I'm reading that right. 24. Yeah, APU is pulled from the left tank. It's pulled from the left tank in the Airbus as well. So why would that affect the temperature? Great question. There's a little vertical deviation. Here's a question. Um, this 3,100 feet required here, Matthew, why is this here? Why does it... Because I'm looking at this next one, the 2-3. Oh, we're slowing down a bit much. Going to have to add a bit of thrust. Uh, confirm that for windward 642 or 649 uh, Yeah, that does confuse me a little bit. Noxad, maintain present heading for sequencing. Maintain present heading after Noxad for sequencing the windward 642. Now we have to leave it with thrust them. Not diving down very fast. Tom, 8 and 5 are pressing into 8. Oh, yeah, range. Let's give the range up. There we go. Tom, J, 8 and 5. Lauren B says it's a question of pressure. If the APU is flowing, it will be false temperature, I think, if our physics are sound. Yeah, but 
The right wing's fuel moves the least, so it will have the least heating. The fuel in the left wing will move on the ground whenever the APU is running and therefore be a bit warmer than the left. Ah, oh, very good. Interesting. Very interesting. Thanks, Matthew. Good trivia. I like it. I like it. So they've just gone for the lowest wing tank, the lowest temperature that you can expect, which makes sense. Any of this to do then? TCAS, radar, cast, landing data. Oh, yeah, so performance. We're doing a flat full landing as we have to. VRF 136. So I'm going to set those two. And then we should be good. <laughs> he says, Matthew, help. Exactly. Matthew should probably just stream this. <laughs> Totem Just sorting something out with the admin. Okay, there we go. I've added the donation link. The reason I'll do that now is just because I copy the stream stream data over, so it is useful for me to uh, to have that ready. That's why it's missing on this one. <laughs> Manta 267. Okay, so it's trying to get to Nox out at 12.6. You can probably just ignore that though. Nox at 12.6. So the 4.2 is to get to Nox at 12.6, is it? It's 20, 40 miles away. We'd need to lose 15, 30, 45. So we need to idle. Yeah, okay, maybe that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting about the, the mixing up of the fuel in the left tank. Um, there's no VNAV to descend with. Um, there is an option in here I haven't used it yet that says coupled VNAV available but I've never tried it I'm not even sure how that would work so I, I haven't worried about it ah ok right so this is from our current position to this waypoint. Is that correct? So yeah, so we'll keep working on the next one, the 27. Nice strong headwind though. 27. I mean, we can just ignore it and work it out ourselves. Uh, if we go to the um, progress page, it's all in here. 75 miles, 25, so 25, 50, 75. So we're only bang on three degrees now. So I need to do three degrees. Our ground speed at the moment is 430, so I need to do 2,000, 2,200 feet per minute. We're doing more than that, so we're doing more than three degrees. So I think that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, plus, we've got a strong headwind. Sorry, we haven't. No, we've got a tailwind at the moment, haven't we? Yeah, that's quite unusual, actually. That's going to swing around quite a lot. Yeah, there's a temperature sensor in both tanks in the Airbus, but the Dash 8 didn't have a temperature. I think the Dash 8 maybe only had the left tank. I can't remember now. But um, the Airbus fuel gets circulated quite a lot. It, it runs the fuel through the IDGs. Um, so plus the fuel pumps tend to generally mix it up. So we can we can run the fuel pumps on the ground and it seems to just mix up the fuel temp and evens out. Um, but yeah, so that is interesting. In fact, the Airbus has four sensors because it's got four areas to the fuel tank, so it's got loads of temperature sensors um, out there in the fuel. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting stuff. But why wouldn't you add the temperature sensor to both tanks, people are asking? it's There's going to be loads of reasons for it. If it's not required... Let's do 300 knots. Um, if it's not required, why add it? It's it's an expensive part. Everything on an airplane is very expensive, so it's amazing how it adds up. Plus, it's extra weight. Plus, it's something that can go wrong. So if that breaks, then you've got to fix it. So, yeah. Togo says, time to heat up the fuel. What was our fuel temperature, actually? <laughs> I haven't talked about it so much. 
Uh, ah, minus eight. No, no, Two that's all good. That's really warm. Because the 737 did have fuel heaters, didn't it? <laughs> Not worried at minus eight. We'll leave that alone. Stats. Uh, but yeah, so if it breaks, and then you've got to get that fixed, I suppose. So if it's not needed, they don't add stuff. Dash 8 didn't have um, brake temperatures. I think if we go to the wheels, is there a wheels page? Doors? No, I thought it might say I saw wheel doors. I don't know why. Electronic electrical fuel. Oh, I'm not sure if it does have a wheel page. It's, got, it's really fancy. So if we press step, does it change? No. Don't know. Um, anyway, it did show us the brake temperatures as we taxied out, and yeah, the Dasho didn't bother with that. It wasn't designed for it. Togo says, sorry I meant does the 320 send the fuel through the IDG to heat it up? It does indeed. There's a fuel oil heat exchanger in the Airbus which circulates the fuel. And that's why the fuel in the outer tanks on the Airbus is going to be warm. And then as you start your descent, that goes into the inner tanks and warms it all up. I don't think it's designed specifically for that reason, but that's how it is. So that page and the gear is out, says Matthew. There we go. So it's only when the gear is out. We can't get to it now. Direct Imoma, produce speed 210 or less. We are getting close in now. I think I'm going to keep it at idle thrust. Let the speed come back. Because things could be about to get difficult. But there we go. We can see that range ring if we need it. 250 knots will be absolutely fine. But we'll just leave it at idle thrust and do the vertical speed we need. So I want to make my life really easy. TNCB 47 miles, 15, 30, 45. We are a little bit high. So I'm going to keep that vertical speed on. Keep coming down. Yeah, the Dash 8, the long struts, lower landing speeds, and the way they retracted, the Dash 8 probably didn't need brake pads. After out, cleared your Zulu approach, report established on final, runway 10. After knocks out, cleared your Zulu, and uh, for 10, we'll go, Manchester 267. So we're going to report final, we clear for the VOR Zulu, so we can do all our descents as we need to. So that's good. So we should fly in now, uh, knocks out, and then instead that 16 arc. I'm sort of tempted to try it now. Sort of tempted to try it. After knocks out, we can get down to 3,000 feet. So I might do that in a second. We can see our level off there. So we're coming down now to our 10,000 feet. Let's slow it down to this extent. I'm going to have to use. Yes. Okay, we're cleared for the procedure, so I'm going to set 3,000 feet in the window. 3,000 feet. And then I'm going to set the Q&H. 1012. There it is. That is set. That should be linked. 1012. Good stuff. 10,000 feet. We left the landlords on the whole way, <laughs> so that's good. Uh, we'll, we'll put the those passenger signs on. There we go, coming into Bon Air now, fantastic. So 2,800 feet per minute, we're still a bit fast. Let's wind off that rate of descent, get the speed under control. So what we should do now, we are inbound on 173. We should intercept the 152 if we were going to do this properly and then fly that arc. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll do it like this. We'll save that for another day. It wouldn't be too hard. We'd literally we'd fly inbound towards the VOR and we'd break off and fly around that green line uh, looking at the DME as we go. It's really not too exciting. Uh, what I would do is I'm going to select the heading because I've just got to watch out. It's cutting us in a little bit tight. It's cutting us in towards 13 miles out. So I want to get there at 13 miles at 3,000 feet at the very lowest, uh, very highest really the speed under control so this is all looking good 
lucky, lucky passengers. I mean, they were lucky enough. They were starting in St. Martin. They can't really complain. Matthew Presley says the 900 really needs brake fans. We often have smoke coming from our brakes at the gate when landing on shorter runways with that jet. Ah, and that's funny. The Dash used to do the same. The thing with the Dash was, I don't, I don't know. I found the Dash harder to slow down on the ground than the Airbus because it's, um, it didn't have auto brakes and we didn't use reverse thrust and so on. Um, of course, it could stop if you needed it to. Using match reverse on those propellers would be really powerful. Yeah, okay. Cool. So, there you go. That's going to put us at 3,000 feet there. We're currently doing 250 knots. But we're not that far out now. Let me just check the Radnav has tuned 1150. It has, and it's given up on the other side. So, I'm going to put 1150 on both sides. I'm going to change... Two, six, seven. Contact Curaçao approach 119 or decimal 6. Bye-bye. 119.6, uh, Manta 267. Goodbye. Oh, good job we heard about Curacao and pronouncing it properly because it got that wrong earlier. Contact uh, Curacao Control 119.6 when established. Curacao, uh, good afternoon. Manta 267 descending to uh, 3,000 feet uh, on the arrival for the VOR Zulu at uh, Bonaire. Manta 267, uh, how to approach the data, reduce speed, 180 knots, please. 180 knots, Manta 267. Okay, here we go then. Uh, no, there's no no autopilot mode to fly it. You'd have to fly it in heading. That's just how it is. Speed breaks out. He wants us to slow down straight away, so I'm going to have to be a bit inventive here. So let's use the speed brakes. Let's put the vertical speed back. So we're going to slow down, and then we'll go down. So we need a bit of flap out to do this. This is going to be really high workload. Maybe we should have flown the arc. Uh, I'm going to change the nav source of the FO now, so don't forget to do it later. The FO is on that. Inbound course 102. Speed's coming back. Let's go to flaps 1. Course for the FO. 102, and hopefully this will work. Okay, what, uh, six two, you're with me? There we go. Flaps to two. Which is actually eight, I should say. Thrust coming on now. And you can see by getting that speed back. Oh, there's the TCAS working nicely. That level off point has actually got closer to us by doing it at the same time. So that's, that's worked out. Speed brakes in. Get the speed back to 180. It does slow down quite well, this plane. I don't know what Matthew thinks. Compared to the real aircraft, it does seem like it. I am happy, Brianna. Yeah, you saved us a bit of embarrassment there. So once we're within that 16 mile arc, we can get us to 2,000. Hello, Leo. Thanks for coming. So there's 1,000 feet to go. There's 180 knots. I'm going to set 2,000 now. This one is zero knots. I'm just for the Zulu. I'm at 267 uh, vectors for separation. I need you to turn right heading 280. Right heading 280, Manta 267. Heading. Get some thrust on. Get that vertical speed back, although we can't save this now. <laughs> um, heading 280. Yeah, there's so we, a continuous descent is no, no point even considering, so we'll just focus on doing what we're told. Welcome to Bonaire. Taxi to stand of choice. Choice, Check those speed brakes are in. No, they're still out. They're quite fussy. You've got to be quite careful with those spoilers. I had selected them in on my joystick, but uh, you have to sometimes redo it. Anyway, we're heading completely away from the airport. We'll get vectored back round and in. So now we're on vectors. I'm going to go nav source FMS. Of course. 102. Oh, okay. There we go. 102. 102. Okay, so we should, when we want to intercept the VOR, we're going to turn around and I'm going to press nav and it should intercept that. Hello, Leo, good to see you. I'm at the 267 turn left heading 150 degrees. Left heading 150 degrees, Manta 267. Oh, 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 excuse me. Heading. So that's very suspiciously like an intercept, which could be good for us. One zero. My mouse wheel seems to be getting a bit fussy. Uh, right, so the next one is before landing. 
We've done the passion signs. We have to arm the reverses. Good stuff. Look at that water. Yeah, you can see it's breezy. You know it's breezy on approach when you look out the side like this and you can see white on the water. So it's really nice they've Mentor simulated that. Affirm you'll still be able to fly the POR approach. Affirm, hey, Mentor 267. Roger. Yeah, this is, he's made it easier for us. <laughs> Mentor so, 267, reduce speed 160 or not. 160 knots, Mantor 267. Stormjet 4 Zulu, reduce speed 160 knots. Clean the plane, it won't slow down at all. Once you get flat eight out, it has plenty of drag. Perfect. So here's the question. Could we slow down to 160 knots with just flap eight? That's something Matthew can answer for us. <laughs> it looks to me like it could, but, but it's going to be pretty nose up. But with those, it's those slats out. You need the slats out to get the airplane to be able to fly at high angles of attack. Otherwise, it isn't, isn't going to manage. Uh, but we can get a bit more slats out by the looks of it. So if we go to the next stage of flap, it's just going to add so much drag. And we're still 20 miles out, so I'd rather not, but if we need it. Lawrence says uh, they're called white horses in sailing speak. There we go. Yeah, if you see those white horses. Clear the VOR, uh, Zulu 10, Wilco, Mantis 267. Okay, so we're clear for the VOR. So I'm going to do a direct, just to clean it up, to the... Uh, Actually, it's already sequenced. It's already going to the 7.8 point, which is there. So that's fine. Keep 160 knots. We're pretty close to the airplane in front. This could be pretty intense. Uh, just to clarify, the go around is straight ahead to 11 miles on the VOR. So straight ahead and then join the hold. Hopefully, before we reach 11 miles out, we'll uh, be vectored. The go around altitude is 2,000 feet. So that's a bit interesting. Anyway, we need to fly that. So I'm going to go nav. See, it says VOR 1. Let's get the thrust on. Thrust on, thrust on, thrust on, don't get any slower. And there you go, see, it's ignoring the heading and it's turning onto that inbound, which is great. So I just realign the heading bug when we're inbound. 200 feet to go. Yeah, I don't think we need any more out. One sixty knots. Good, 17 miles, so we've got quite a way to go until we need to start our descent, so I won't configure just yet. Uh, Carasso, it's on our, it's behind us, actually. It's there. It's there. So it wouldn't be much of a sector for us to do next, but it's definitely somewhere we could go. Oh, press, press the wrong thing. Don't do that. Out there's capture. Oh, don't speed up either. 160 knots. Matthew, Zulu, confirm left turn what is your weight? Amami, Alpha Mike, Alpha Mike, India. Is that obviously written anywhere, or do we have to do, we have to do a bit of digging? We are pretty heavy. I can show you in here, actually. Zulu, uh, apologize. It should have been another waypoint. Left turn direct. Uh, we are. India, Mike. We took up a 31 tons, so we must be sort of 28 tons at the moment. Direct uh, Mama. So if you weigh 25, Zulu. six. 25, six. Plus three tons, so 28.6. There you go, so the 16 miles worked, there's the 6 miles there, so we don't need to descend really until uh, until that point. And uh, Manta 267 reduced the final approach speed? Final approach Manta 267. Actually, that's not true, because that ring is based on the... Oh, that's because I'm accelerated. Uh, that's based on the VOR, so that's that's actually not quite right. That's uh, that's from the runway that would work, but for the VOR that's not. But we won't fiddle with that now. Final approach speed then, so let's set that. Let's go gear down. And you'll see that speed wash off. Next stage of flat, please. Next stage of flat, please. Five mile separation, but there is a backtrack to do. So I'm going to put all the flap out. I'm going to need basically climb thrust here to maintain level flight. There we go. Right, now let's not get too distracted. So this is incredibly draggy. We're needing a huge amount of thrust. It's not efficient. <laughs> it does float when protecting flat 45, but I would expect it to. They are they are big flaps. That's a a lot of drag, a lot of um yeah, in fact are they double slotted? I think they could be double slotted, so yeah, you'd get plenty of lift off those. Let's try and balance those thrust settings. Need what, seventy percent it seems? Basically climb thrust here. Okay, so it's in out there. So what I'm going to do, just because I had trouble with it earlier, I'm going to wind the altitude out of the way and leave it in out mode. I'm not sure if that's an issue or not. 
I'm going to set it to 3,000. I'll try and remember to adjust Object, it later. Uh, the point uh, is, speed, at 8.1, uh, I'm going to start my descent. Um, uh, You're putting a parachute one now, one exactly. Zero. Let's press Back heading in case we need it. So that's now in front of us. Strong headwind as we expected. Thanks a lot. Uh, backtrack runway one zero and uh, confirm uh, taxiway for uh, wind, uh, wind, wind wind six four two, please. Yeah, vacate right. Nine point eight delta. So eight point one. We're going to go vertical right speed. Delta. Uh, thank you. Let's check it now. If I go vertical speed, yeah, speed taxi is proof final. vertical speed zero. Out S is above us, but I don't want to do uh, that. Uh, high speed taxi for wind because, of course, the VOR isn't on the uh, runway. It's actually further across. So we're a bit closer than that VOR suggests. We're actually seven miles out. I can see it there. So, descending about a mile would make sense, wouldn't it? So, it's a sensibility check. That works. Oh, it's amazing, yeah. Can't wait till we start down. It's not very comfortable flying along like this. Ground speed is 139. So, at 140, we need a ground speed of... 700 feet per minute. 8.2, 8.1 come in. That's 700 feet per minute. Object, uh, HM5X4, Starting uh, down. Turn, uh, right heading two, Take that thrust feet. off. Try and keep it at 140. Turn right heading two, right one, at uh, 7 miles, I want to be 1730 feet. If I go to the direct page, I can see I need probably about 500 feet per minute. We are a little bit low. Let's do 500 feet per minute. Seven miles. Yeah, we're a little bit low. So we'll keep doing 500 feet per minute for now as we correct back onto it. Ground speed is still about 140. Oh, sorry, ground speed is 117. Yeah. No, we, we uh, I was misreading it. So with that headwind, it makes sense, actually. How can it be 140? Uh, so we only need to do about 600 feet per minute to maintain. So 400 to get back on profile. Five miles, 1,090. Sorry, six miles, 1,410 is the next one. Let's do that. Manta 267, final uh, runway 10. Manta 267, Roger Kitty, we approach traffic on the runway. Can you approach Manta 267? Right, let's see if I can start up the replay tool. Approach, windward uh, 642, clear runway uh, 10. Uh, our apologies, we located the taxiway Charlie. Ah, no problem, break uh, Manta uh, 267, the wind. At Bonaire, 090, at 19 knots, 290 knots, runway 10, clear land. Clear land, runway 10, match 267. Right, five miles. We want it to be 1,090. We've got about, about 100 feet high there. Put too much faffing around. Um, so, anyway, we are clear to land. Let's run the landing checklist. Cabin advise, get the reverses on. And let's see. Passion pass signs, thrust reverses, landing it down, flaps are at full or 45, as it were. Next check is at 4 miles, 770 feet. Yeah, so we are definitely a bit high. Um, uh, Autopilot off, uh, flight directors off. Right let's two, see, two, it's two, a bit two. hard to make out the pappies there. I think they're showing two whites, two reds. So we shall see what happens with that. Right, turn two, two, zero degrees. Just aiming towards that, uh, that touchdown zone now. Try and keep the speed. I think it's about 60 plus percent needed on the N1. Easy to get slow in this aeroplane. Will that drag out? Hopefully it's about trimmed. 700 feet minutes, too much. Too much, we'll get it low. Oh, 300. <laughs> it's just so sensitive in pitch. But there we go, two whites, two reds. That seems to have worked out. Yeah, I definitely need to fiddle with that. I need to remove some of the curve. So you can see how much easier it is when you go visual, if you have that option. Minima's there, so... We would only have just picked it up there if we were flying this properly in IMC conditions. Getting a bit of turbulence, as you'd expect. So big runway like this, in this sort of heat, you could expect some serious uh, updraft from it, I would imagine, as you go over. The Pappy seems to go four reds here, but not, not a concern. Idle. Keep coming down, please. Come on, you can do it. There's touchdown. And I'm just going to let the reverses take the strain. Get the nose wheel down so that we can get some <laughs> nose wheel steering action. 
and I'm just using the reverses to slow down now. Reverse to idle and let's take over with the brakes so we can get our backtrack done. And there we go. Welcome to Bonaire. I hope you saw that terminal on the left as we came in. We're about to go and park and find it. So what's our ground speed? Let's slow right down. Yeah, a bit of a float there, as exactly as uh, I expected. So uh, yeah, not bad though. It's quite a, oh, a lovely massive runway. So let's get ourselves quickly backtracking. Come on, aeroplane. You Lots of the service. Have a good time. Yeah, see ya. Menti 267, welcome to Bonaire. Backtrack on 110, Vega Drive on Delta and Extradite, please. Backtrack right on Delta, Wilco, uh, Manta 267. Okay, now, there are... We have to be sensible with this. <laughs> Maximum speed limit in a straight line on the runway. Well, that is a good one. Quite a flow to this plane. Yeah, it is. You've got to be careful. And I knew it would be. I briefed it earlier and I still didn't manage to stop it. Right, Delta's going to be the second right. There's someone out there on approach. We are currently doing... It doesn't show us our ground speed. Oh, ground speed 26. So that's not very fast at all. We can do faster than that. It feels faster because we're so low down. So let's add a bit of thrust. Yeah. A bit of... Um, Group of flight in the Caribbean would be good fun, wouldn't it? Look at all those flaps, they are just massive. Oh dear. I think we'll be alright. If I don't look inside at the ground speed, you can't you guys can't tell me off, can you? I think it's okay. Get on those brakes. Get on those brakes. Don't want to miss it now, that will slow us down. I think this is Delta. Off we go. You can't let air traffic press you too much. In real life, of course, it's about what you've got to do. And if they've got the spacing wrong, then they've got the spacing wrong. I mean, it, sometimes it happens. And there we go. This is Delta. Our colleague can land, which is excellent news. Right. I'm going to stop here because there's loads I haven't done. I'm going to set the brake just while I think about things. So let's get the landing lights off. Let's get the APU up and running. Let's get the uh, flaps up. All the way. Let's get that radar off. Ooh. Off and off. And I think it's coming together. And here's the scenery. Look at this. It's absolutely fantastic. So you've got the, there are terminal flags. Great to see Virgin Sun represented. Very happy about that. APU's coming online i don't think we got a stand i didn't hear it if we did so i'll have to ask him in a second uh, yeah a lot of a lot of people are saying about the float there we go type x is what i call that <laughs> lovely landing by thompson oh they did far better <laughs> fantastic yeah we did float along Matthew says, we had a guy do 54 knots while taxiing in one of our safety bulletins about a year ago, but you didn't hear that from me. So 54 knots, yeah, that is fast. On a runway, I wouldn't do, I might be okay 30 to 40 knots if you're in a straight line on the runway only, but yeah, on a taxiway, absolutely not. Standard, standard choice, thank you, Mantis 267, thanks for your help. Uh, good, so let us, well, we've only got one standard choice. Brakes released, let's go and park up. We do have a replay. Toga says we're waiting for the V1 quarter on the back track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a joke you can pull on your other pilot. If they're taxiing too fast, you can say rotate. <laughs> you didn't hear that from me. Right. Uh, we are going to squeeze around onto stand three. So that's all sort of looking good. Is there an after landing? After landing, yeah. APU start. Transponder needs to go to standby. Slat, slat, zero lights, probes. So transponder, we finally found it. Thanks to you guys to standby. And the probes can go off. And let me just see what that was. Thank you. Uh, let's see. What have I missed? Thank you for subscriptions to Patrick and okay, Apology. Uh, right. We're going to park on stand three. And then we get a replay, guys. I promise. Replay is coming. And you might see some passengers if we're lucky. I don't know. I'm hoping so. Yeah, piano learner, that's an interesting story. But yeah, you do hear stories like that from America. I'll be curious to see what happens when we head up to the busier airports. 
F1, 2 2 0 the pizza will clear into the game for you. Clear to Juliana via the east. Ah, they're going to Juliana, fantastic. So, yeah, that west jet, you will see passengers strolling in and out um, of this terminal, which is just really great. I've never seen it before. Hey, pizza's up and running. I'm going to leave. Actually, now you guys know the drill. We're going to have to leave the flaps out and we're going to put the lights on. Um, it's not the procedure, but it's just going to help us for what we're about to do, which is the replay. And so I won't shut down the engines for the same reason. But look at this. I love the pink. It's Flamingo International Airport. There it is over there. There's a sign and the animated flags. I've never seen that before. So yeah, I might do a little video on this one like I've done with my Oxford and Blackbush. But thank you guys for coming along. I hope you uh, enjoyed the um, the video. Thank you for taking the time to come out and watch the stream with us. Really appreciate it. I've really enjoyed it as always. And let us, well, not as always actually, but yeah, I definitely did enjoy it. <laughs> no, I always enjoy it. We give ourselves some harder days than others. And there you go. We've done our first non-position approach in the CRJ. I don't. I haven't done many non-position approaches in non-Airbus aircraft. Uh, enjoy dinner, Vix Tango. Thanks for coming along. Let's disconnect from Batsim. They've done a fantastic job with us. There's Thompson coming back. Disconnect. There's the passengers boarding over at the other runway, <laughs> which is just great. Never seen that in the in a scenery before. Giuseppe says, zoom in on the bench in the hallway in the terminal entrance to your left. You'll see the little altar to the old tower, a nice Easter egg. Um, I think, oh yeah, I'll do that in the video. I'll definitely do that. That's a good idea. Uh, and let's jump into the replay. No, I only did it on final approach. So. Here we go then. So we came in, really long float. I went into the flare. I, I think I felt more ground effect today than normal, but it could just be me. It could be the headwind, strong headwind. And then we kept flaring, kept flaring, started to reach the end of the zone. <laughs> we were, I mean, the touchdown zone doesn't end until here. It's such a huge runway. Um, we did cross the threshold a little bit low, so that, that gives us that option. And what I did here was I used reverse thrust um, to slow us down. If you've got a long runway, it's not so applicable when it's like this, but to save heating up those brakes too much, if you've got a long runway, what you can do is use reverse thrust and not touch the brakes until very late on. It's not great for fuel burn or efficiency or anything like that. Uh, and airports won't like it because of the noise. But it's, it's, it's something that will ha help your brakes. So if you need to do it for operational reasons, um, there you go. Uh, look at that water. It's much of flight simulator looking absolutely fantastic. Shame your PC froze, Simon, but thanks for coming along. And uh, Mark, thank you for coming along. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And thank you, Matthew, as well, for coming along on uh, the stream and helping us out. You're welcome, Thor. Great to see you here, and uh, yeah. So let us. I don't think I don't think there's much point showing you guys that again. Let's put it out on final. Pretty much where the recording starts, really. Let's jump into our wing view. Are you going to enjoy the passenger view? And I'm going to get the music ready. So thank you guys for coming along. Really appreciate it. Thank you for uh, your kind nation uh, for Danny, and thank you for subscribing to those of you who subscribed. And thank you to the moderators for coming along as well. Again, thanks to Matthew for all your uh, information. It's been really invaluable. Hopefully we'll see you again on another stream soon. And we'll see the rest of you guys uh, for another live stream or video very soon on the channel. Uh, we'll have a great evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.